Shea Stadium in New York. It's the Kia Wednesday game of the week as the New York Mets play the Florida Marlins. This Mets game on SNY is presented in high definition by IO Digital Cable, the leader in HD. Do you see in HD? Adam Plunzer, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Shea Stadium. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you today. The Mets and Marlins wrap up their three-game series. The Marlins have taken the first two, and now it's on Oliver Perez to get the Mets a win today. Well, Oliver Perez goes out for his fifth start. He's 2-2 two and two on the year, and he's had, of the four starts he's had, he's only had the one bad start, the seven walks, which is the only walks he allowed all season. His last three starts have been uh, without a walk, and he's averaging 10 strikeouts per nine innings nine strikeouts in his last two starts so he's kind of taken over the mantle here as maybe a chance to be the ace of this ball club certainly had a chance to win his last start against washington but dropped a four to three decision but he's become a strike thrower all of a sudden well it's, it shows right there in his walks i mean he, he had that one horrific outing the second outing as we said where he walked seven but the other three starts he's walked nobody he's throwing strikes he's throwing hard he's getting his breaking ball over he's just murder on left handers speaking of murder things have been going very poorly for David Wright until last night David was put in the number two spot in the batting order and well he flourished well he broke out of his uh, what he used to say a, a, a June Sloan well with his April Sloan and how ironic on May 1st uh, get April behind him and David breaks out with a three for four and this was the one right here I think they got him going that was his second hit of the game the opposite field home run he followed with a double down the left field line and you know three for four we'll see today but I think he's on his way David's back in the five hole today. Andy Chavez gets a start, and Andy hasn't played a lot so far this season. Only his third start of the year. And all three starts will be in left field. Uh, Moises Alou gets a rest today with the shoulder. And really, he's hitting in the second spot. This is really the, the best second place hitter if, for the Mets as far as the order is concerned. Uh, Mets order is concerned because it gives him more speed at the top. Laduca is a terrific second place hitter, but the one thing he doesn't bring is speed on the bases. Chavez does. So it's the Mets and the Marlins wrapping up their three game series before the Mets head west to Phoenix. Oliver Perez against Anibal Sanchez tonight. It's been the Marlins dominating the first two games of the series offensively and defensively. David Wright broke out last night. Tries to keep it going in this one. Baseball in the afternoon at Shea. Always bring your juice cup with you. Not a warm afternoon by any means, around 55 degrees, but perfect day to take in a ball game. Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Kia, the presenting sponsor of the Kia Wednesday Game of the Week on Sportsnet New York. By Aflac, ask about it at work. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Barbados, proud sponsor of the New York Mets, come experience the Caribbean. And by IO Digital Cable, the leaders in HD and presenting sponsor of the Mets in high definition. Do you see in HD? Check out our Jeep around the majors. Lots went on last night. Uh, it's almost incomprehensible what's happened to Yankee pitchers, but Philip Hughes working on a no-hitter in the seventh, pulled a hamstring and had to leave. Dodgers went in the bottom of the ninth. Olmedo signs, one of the best pinch hitters in the game, won it against Arizona. And the Red Sox fall as Jonathan Papelbon gives up a ninth inning home run to Travis Buck. And the A's win it in the tenth. Oliver Perez takes them out for the Mets this afternoon as they look to salvage the finale of the three-game series against the Marlins and avoid their first home sweep in two seasons. Mets and Marlins first pitch coming up. Oliver Perez set to make his fifth start of the season. Wound up throwing 120 pitches in his last start against Washington. It'll be interesting to see how he bounces back from that. As we check out the Ford Marlins lineup, Josh Willingham has been a huge thorn in the Mets side. Last night drove in all five Florida runs with a home run and a triple, but even going back to his rookie year last year, Willingham has had a ton of big hits against the Mets. Cody Ross plays center. Matt Trainer does the catching. A couple of changes in Freddie Gonzalez's lineup. And you look at Oliver Perez here trying to get on the win column here to get his record above 500. And you can see he, after those seven walks, is in that one second start. And he has been pretty awesome as far as leading off hitter 
getting hit leadoff hitters out so far this year. He's second lowest in the National League behind Tim Hudson. It's a 125 batting average for leadoff hitters. So that's that's a plus. Hanley Ramirez will lead things off for the Marlins. In fact, Perez hasn't walked the leadoff batter in any inning this year, so he's given himself a chance. Getting that first man out is always such a key in his opposite number today. Anibal Sanchez has had a problem with that. Ramirez two for nine in the series at a home run on Monday night to put a crimp in Chan Ho Park's start. And Perez starts him off with a fastball up and away for ball one. The Mets have their nice blue caps on today. I like that. You know, the Mets have not won in their blue caps yet this year. It's about it's a good time then. <laughs> Two and zero to Ramirez. They certainly don't want to get swept here at home by the Marlins. And there's a man that would like to bring the broom out. There's a strike and it's two and one to Ramirez. Well, the Mets did not get swept at home all of last season. And you see that incredibly low on base percentage against hitters leading off an inning. And it just puts you in such good position when you get that first hitter out. Gets even on Ramirez with the fastball two and two. Well, just behind the count, come back with two fastballs. Take your chances. Swung right through it. Ramirez thinking leadoff home run, and he's capable of that. He's a leadoff hitter with power. And Ramirez fouls the slider away, and it's still two and two. Well, Ramirez last night made a beautiful throw home on that first inning when they struck him out strike him out throw him out Delgado struck out runners on first and third made the took the throw from the catcher and threw out the runner at home struck him out came right at him with heat and Paris fans Ramirez to start the afternoon well I guess Rick Peterson's writing down right there nice fastball in look at this beat him Second baseman, number six. Now, Perez if he can keep his arm angle straight. I mean the one game that he pitched poorly against the Phillies. He just he was all over the place. And other than that he has been a strike thrower. There's Dan Ugla and he takes it wide. And it's amazing the way that. He has been able to stay in a groove and that start against Atlanta the second one he threw 20 straight strikes at one point. Hit hard down the line. That's an extra base hit for Ugla. So Ugla has had awful problems hitting here at Shea. Cruises into second base with a one-out double. Well, Ugla last night got a base hit in the fifth, and that, that broke an 0 for 21 streak. And this is where Perez can, has to be extra careful. You've got an all-right-handed lineup basically today, and he has to be extra careful against right hand hitters he got beat in Washington with a three run home run in the first inning he settled down but he's always oh, he's, he's really tough on lefties obviously with that side you know three quarter sidearm delivery here's Miguel Cabrera hitting at 360 fifth in the league and he lines one to center field for a base hit and that'll chase Ugla home Beltron air mails the throw but Delgado gets over and cuts it off to hold Cabrera to first and the Marlins take a quick one nothing lead Cabrera drives in his 20th run of the year. Well he's such a clutch hitter first ball fastball hitting and you see right now it was mid thigh out over the plate and what's happening right now with Perez as Ugla's going to score easily. I don't know what he's hesitating about you got to know where your outfielders are you see so much of that today. Look at the eye on the ball. Beautiful balance. That's a beautiful swing. That's why he was number two in the league last year. So Cabrera continues to rake. That's an eight-game hitting streak for him. A run in for the Marlins, and here's Josh Willingham. And he takes a slider for a strike. I was going to finish that point, is that, again, right-hand hitters. He, he can't throw that fastball out over the plate. He's got to be either be in or away with it. Willingham with the five RBIs last night. Seven in this series, and he launches this one deep but foul. 
Nothing at two to Willingham. Well, the Lexus defense for the Mets as Chavez gets his third start of the season, all of, all of them in left field. Ruben Gatai gets his first start at second base. Damon Easley gets a rest on the bench. Castro behind the plate again. That's Castro's seventh start behind the plate. Check swing on the slider, and he held it in time. Ryan Gorman, the umpire at first. One ball, two strengths. Now that's the slider. There's Ruben Gatai right there. His uncle was a uncle was a minor league instructor. That's the slider he needs to throw to right hand hitters right there. Get that down break. He can't come down sidearm and have a flat breaking ball to right hand hitters. Willingham came awfully close to committing at that pitch. Holds this one and it's two and two. Again about Ruben Gotai. Um, his father was a minor league coach in the Cardinal system. And they're working today in the ballpark. It's a work day. Look at that. Future Mets stadium right over the center field fence they have an average of about 400 workers out there every day working on city field and every day you look over there and there's a little bit more done struck him out with the fastball Perez after coming inside with a couple of sliders goes away with the heat and he's got two strikeouts in the opening inning well after all the sliders inside he goes up and away with a fastball using both sides of the plate Gary so two out there they are don't jump. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, doesn't it? Well, this piece goes there. It doesn't quite fit. You have a piece of the sky. Put that one up on top. It's just amazing that they actually know what there's a method to the madness. Aaron Boone hitting fifth in the order. Getting the start at first base today against the lefty, giving Mike Jacobs a day off. Veteran Boone, who struggled in Cleveland last year, has done a nice job filling in. Jacobs missed five games last week with a thumb injury. And so Boone got some playing time. Hop foul. And it's one and one to Aaron Boone. Boone's had to learn a whole new position this year as we look at Cody Ross on deck. Boone had never played first base before in his career. I think probably the most difficult thing is the footwork around the bag if you've never played first base before. It's not easy. Popped up. Reyes going out. Beltron in. And Gotai takes charge and makes the catch. Well, that's another ball you would have liked to have seen Beltron take charge of, but Gotai was able to get out there and make the play. Marlins get a run off Perez in the first. Twenty three year old Anibal Sanchez who won ten games for the Marlins last year including a no hitter takes on this Geico Mets starting lineup Sean Green riding a hitting streak go Castro and Chavez all get starts today and Jose Reyes leads off with a fly ball to left and on the first pitch Sanchez has an out one away. Well, they're going to show you the Venezuelan Anibal Sanchez. As Gary said, 10 and 3 last year in his break in season with the no hitter. Too many walks this year. That'll get you in trouble with innings pitched. He has had only 7% of his innings this year have been 1, 2, 3, and a lot of it is because of the walks. We showed you how good Oliver Perez has been getting leadoff hitters out. Sanchez has been the opposite. As Andy Chavez takes a strike, he got Reyes out here, but. Coming into the day, the on-base percentage against Sanchez leading off an inning is 481, which means he's been tr in trouble all the time. And the curveball misses to Chavez, one and one. Well, Sanchez has the, the curveball. It's kind of a lazy, slow curve, but his big pitch is his changeup. Andy hitting at even 400, and he chases the curveball, and it's one and two. And you can see not much of a motion, yeah, like a dart thrower. Very compact motion. If I put him in a bar and give him a dart, bet on him for a beer. Two and two to Chavez. <laughs> put him in a British pub is where you want him to be. <laughs> you see, just very compact, very short. There's the dart. Bullseye. Chavez pops it up. Ramirez making the call. And they're two away. 
So two out and nobody on. Sanchez generally gets off to good starts. Look at that. He allowed first inning runs in two of his 22 career starts. Well, he's been tough on the first pass through the order so far this season. Old guy's only hitting 237 through the order first time. Beltron takes the ball. And things kind of fall apart from him after that, for him after that. And he's only been like a five inning pitcher this year, Gary. Three of his four starts, he's only gone five. And yet he's 2 0. And he's had two other games that he left with the lead that the bullpen let get away. Marlins have scored more runs than any team in the league. And the Rico Marlin defense. Boone gets to start at first. And we'll bring it back up. Uh, Ugla, of course, Ramirez, Cabrera, the other regulars. Trainer gets to start behind the plate. Matt Trainer. Ross is the platooner in center field. Borchard is the everyday right fielder. And Willingham, of course, the Met killer last night in left. 2-1 to Beltron, fouled away. Carlos 5 for 9 in this series. Tied for third in the league with 23 RBIs. Sixth in the league and hitting at 352. Just off to a wonderful start. Carlos Delgado waiting on deck. Whoop. And trainers had trouble catching a couple early on in this game. It's three and two. Well, Sanchez in spring training, and this ball just he wants it in. Just didn't get it in at all. He was had some control problems. He walked a lot of guys in spring. And Beltron walks on cue. 16 walks in 27 innings for Sanchez. That's too many. And the Mets have the tying run aboard. And you couple that, Gary, with the 36 hits he's given up, and that's a lot of men on base. The Mets, meanwhile, have had a lot of trouble cashing in early opportunities. Last night, they had first and third and nobody out in the first inning, didn't score. The night before, they had first and second and one out in the first inning and didn't score. And Willie Randolph's been a little perturbed about that. Last game in Washington, they got the first two men on in the first and didn't score. So it's kind of been a pattern. Delgado had a couple of hits last night. And he takes the curve for a strike. Well, you can see that's Dan Ugla, the second baseman. This is Ramirez, your shortstop. That's Cabrera, your third baseman. Now, I don't understand why Willingham doesn't get out in here. Give him the left field line. Last night, Delgado hit three balls to the left side, two of them for hits, and one a fly out to left field. And Sanchez has missed badly with several pitches early on in this game. You see right there, you wonder why they put the shift on Carlos. He's got everything so evenly distributed to the various outfield positions, but a lot of those right hits in right field, the six, are with two strikes. Mm -hmm. And most of his hits to left, too, are ground balls that get through that that shift. Last night, he had two of them. One that you know, went uh, where a third baseman normally would have been playing and nobody was there. The other went through the normal shortstop position with nobody there. And Delgado's had the same problem as David Wright. He's been out in front like all guys in a slump. And he's been under the radar screen. And David got the spotlight on his April swoon there as... And uh, Carlos kind of went under the radar screen, but he's hit the ball hard at, at times. I think David was in a deeper slump, but he is still struggling. Delgado. And the 1-1 one -one curve in for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. Well, this is a slow curve ball, like a 12 to 6 o'clock drop on the outside corner. Nice pitch. You see Carlos striding too quick. And he's done. Once you do that, you're finished. You can't touch the pitch. Beltron diving back. Carlos has stolen five this year, been caught only once. Well, Rick Down watched this last year with Carlos Delgado. Carlos had a tremendous year when all was said and done, but he had a big donut in the middle there where. Well, he was in this kind of uh, this kind of struggle. It just everybody goes through things, and you know, you hit 300, you fail 70 percent of the time, and you're considered a great hitter. And that's how difficult hitting is. Boone holding against Beltron, and Delgado.
Maldonado got a piece. Barely. Now last year Carlos got off to a great start. Ten home runs by this time last year. But it's a different kind of start for him. Fortunately for the Mets, they've had other guys in the batting order get off to better starts. Carlos Beltran had to scramble to get it back in that time. Well, that's what winning teams are about. You know, you, you know the famous saying, thing, pick me up. You know, I leave men on base, you strike out, you pass the guy in the on-deck circle, pick me up. And the Mets have been doing that. One and two to Delgado. And he misses with the fastball, two and two. You know, two straight cheeses in. I got to believe he's going to drop a little slow curve on the outside corner on him here. Or try to. Matt Trainer doing the catching today and getting some counsel from the dugout. Yep, he wants a curve. Set up away. And he didn't get it over. So it's three and two after Sanchez got ahead in the count. So that mean, that'll be an automatic start for Beltron. He's probably going to drop another one here. So Boone plays behind Beltron here as he gets set to take off. Another curve. And he missed with it. Back to back walks, setting the table for David Wright. So Sanchez misses with the 3 2 hook, and Wright comes up with two men on. Well, you've got a hitter that broke out of a slump last night in a very, very big way with a double and a home run and the three for four. And you've got a, and you've got a struggling Delgado, and you walk him on two curveballs. Here's the home run last night, which is always a good sign. That ball was down the middle of the ball. You can either pull or go the other way and Rick down, of course. They're probably as happy as David. That home run coming in Wright's 92nd at bat of the season, and he almost did another one later in the game. His double going about halfway up the fence and left. Two out and two on. And Sanchez nips the outside corner. Looks like a little cutter. And the catcher was set up in, Gary, and I just think it's just a fastball that got the other side of the plate unintentional so Sanchez struggling a bit with his command early after getting the first two outs David hitting at 266 he's kept his on base percentage high through this early season difficulty and now he finds himself in a two strike hole good up and in fastball right there this is where you want to throw it right in there just about there. Good pitch. Last year, Wright had some remarkable at bats after getting to 0 2. Working deep counts. Waiting for his pitch. Makes the breaking ball high. Beltron at second, Delgado at first with two down. Really hoping that first inning base runners can lead to first inning runs. It's been a problem. And it's two and two to right. And you can see Sanchez makes for every two good pitches he makes, he'll back it up with two pitches not even close. So it's very inconsistent. And that's been the story of his season so far. He's given up a lot of hits. The league is hitting over 320 against him. And the Mets trying to cash in in the first. Wright breaks his bat and fouls it. He didn't know where that ball was going. Well, the uh, the larger portion of the bat sailed right past the pitcher Sanchez and wound up at the back of the mound. Watch David's reaction after contact here. Watch his face. He doesn't know where the ball is. He's looking for it. <laughs> well, he knew where the barrel of the bat went because it was right in front of him. He's set up to go the other way, and he got jammed there big time. How about, how about Sanchez? Very calm. He just kind of lifted his foot and let the bat sail by. Like a matador. This will be his 25th pitch of the inning. Sanchez without his cape deals home. Right off the pitcher. Caroms to Boone. He'll get the out at first. That'll end the inning. But the concern for Sanchez, who took that as a direct hit off his leg, and he is crumpled on the mound. The inning is over, but David Wright hitting one solidly back to the box. Oh, I mean, he got his kneecap. Looked like it nailed him right on the knee. 
left knee maybe a little to the outside of the knee which would be a better thing you would think but Sanchez just now getting to his feet yep he got his kneecap so the Mets are retired in the bottom of the first painfully by Adabal Sanchez we go to the second inning here at Shea after Sanchez takes a direct hit from David Wright and we'll see whether he can continue in the next inning nice and bad by David Ross leading off the second inning and he pops it straight up right coming down from third to call nicely done by David to get everybody else out of the way and, and Ross retired one away nice nicely done by Perez too. and there's David coming in it's David's ball you don't know about the win that's why Laduca right now is being extra careful he's waiting to be called off and look at Perez that's beautiful that's why the Lord gave you a voice not to talk to talk on the baseball field to scream I got it for exactly Joe Borchard takes a strike Borchard just one for nine in this series and you see the batting average just 233 and fooled by the slider and Perez ahead 0 and 2. How many times has he, what was that stat on Borchard as far as swings and misses this year, Gary? Yeah, he's right up among the league leaders. Borchard has swung and missed 31% of his swings. That made me cry. And he swings and misses. That's the third strikeout for Oliver Perez. This is the down slider I'm talking about right here. That he has to throw to the right handers. Look at the down break. He cannot throw a flat slider to the right hand hitters. He can get away with it to the lefties, but not the righties. Well, there's the Marlins bullpen, and there's nobody throwing, which would certainly be an encouraging sign for Anibal Sanchez as he sits in the dugout and they ponder whether he can continue after taking that shot off his knee. Here's Matt Trainer, and he takes a slider for a strike. Trainer getting his fifth start of the season, and there's Sanchez out on deck. I like it. I, I'm impressed. Because when he crumpled to the mound there, you wouldn't have given odds that he was coming back. 0 oh, 2 to Trainer. I mean, uh, the Jeff Carstens for the Yankees took that shot off his knee last Saturday and actually faced the next batter before coming out. Well, here it is again. A bullet is off his left kneecap, and I got to believe it was above the kneecap, not directly on it. Because it if it did hit the kneecap, they would not take a chance at having an x-ray. Well, it caromed hard, but it caromed toward first base, which gives you the idea it caught it kind of on the side. So anyway, in any event, it's nice to see Sanchez standing there with his helmet on in the on-deck circle. Mejor, as they say. Excuse yes. me? That means, means a man in Espanol. Hombre mejor. Struck him out. Complete the putout. That's four strikeouts in the first two innings for Perez as he dominates the Marlins in the second. John Green up to lead off as the Mets come up against Sanchez in the bottom. To access premium seat locations at Shea, sign up for your membership now at Mets.com. Members can purchase available prime club and box seats for single games directly from the Mets ticket marketplace. For more information, visit Mets.com. Annabelle Sanchez, good to go after taking that shot from David Wright off his left knee, and he throws a strike to Sean Green. He only had 85 miles per hour on that fastball. So I'm sure that's something that pitching coach Rich Kranitz is, for the Marlins is watching carefully. Sean Green riding a nine-game hitting streak. Make it ten as he goes the other way and dumps one down the line. Green will get two bases out of this. And Sean Green continues to use the whole field. Well, this is like the hit last night, Gary. Same pitch. Same result. Look at that. That is just beautiful. That's how you hit a pitch. on Drive a pitch on the outside corner. That's a pitcher's pitch right there. That's just good hitting. Sean Green now has 14 hits to left field, 7 to center, and 12 to right. How do you know that? Had it right in front of me here. You, you, I tell you. But that's, that's perfect hit distribution. Castro lifts one to shallow left, and Willingham coming in. 
So Castro fails to move the runner and that's the first down. But I mean that's a very different Sean Green. Yes. When Green was in his heyday with Toronto with the Dodgers he did balls to the gaps but he was a pull hitter. But he was more of a power hitter too. So maybe he's made the adjustment here that he's maybe I've lost my power. Let me just go back to hitting the ball where it's pitched and well, become a doubles hitter. Well, he's hitting over 350 so right now it's working for him. There's too much emphasis on the home run today's game. Uh, it, to me it's just you drive in clutch runs. What you do when men are on base. Here's Ruben Gotai, his first start as a Met. And brushed <laughs> back by Sanchez. Welcome to the big leagues. <laughs> little chin music. Nothing wrong with that. Gotai, a switch hitter, and he takes the off speed pitch for a strike. Gotai is not a rookie, played in 130 games with Kansas City in 04 and 05, had over 400 at bats. Lifetime 242 big league hitter spent all of last year in the minors. And that's picked him up midway through last season in a straight up deal for Jeff Kepinger. Another, another young guy. And the Mets uh, they made the decision to bring him up rather than Anderson Hernandez because they thought he could give them more. And that's got to be very disappointing for Anderson Hernandez who after all was the Mets opening day second baseman last year but he just hasn't played well down in triple A. Well you shouldn't be rewarded for bad play and the eight errors he's made down there which is just incredible to me he's such a fine glove you know you don't re reward um, failure. Two and two to go tie. Go tie appeared as a pinch hitter in the game two nights ago his first at bat as a med and he was robbed of a base hit on a terrific play by Miguel Cabrera. Gotai was hitting 256 in Triple A with a couple of home runs. Fouls that one away, and it's two and two. I'll say Valentin will probably be out at least a month. Damien Easley got the first two starts after Valentin got hurt. We look at Perez on deck, but Gotai has a chance to win himself some playing time. Bounces that one toward the hole. Ugla can't get it. Base hit. Around third green heading home. No throw by Borchard. And the Mets have tied the game. Ruben Gotai with an RBI single. His first hit as a Met. And the Mets get even one to one. Well, you've got to keep the ball in the infield here. And you look at Ugla starting right there. Makes a nice dive. But boy, when you dive, make sure you keep it in the infield. And just under his glove good change up right there nice hitting look at him to get his glove down he stabbed at it Marlins look for the bunt as Paris comes up and a hard throw to first by Sanchez Oliver looking for his first sacrifice of the year Oliver swings a good bat he's dangerous up at the plate One to know to Perez. So the Mets get even. Sean Green a leadoff double, extending his hitting streak to 10 games. Ruben Gotai gets his first hit as a Met as it drives in a run. Ruben's uncle Julio, who you were talking about earlier, was in the lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals on opening day in 1962 against the Mets, the first ever game in Mets history. That was in St. Louis, correct? Yep. Actually, they got rained out the uh, the first day in St. Louis. And then the next day, half the Mets team got stuck in an elevator on their way to the game. They made it, but they lost. In fact, they lost their first eight. How many did they wind up losing that year, do you remember? 120. 40 wins, 120 losses, two rainouts. I think Casey Stingle that year provided most of the entertainment. Well, the Mets could hit in 1962. Frank Thomas hit 34 home runs. Richie Ashburn hit over 300, but they couldn't pitch at all. Paris set to swing. Took a good hack, and it's one and one. Well, I played Stratomatic in the 64 and 65 seasons in the National League, and pretty much the same the Mets 
And 64 could hit a little bit, but had no pitching. 65, a little better pitching, but not enough. Nearly. The bunt back on. It's two and one. Well, 1962, the team was 40 and 120. Only one pitcher on that team had a winning record. Who was it? Ken McKenzie, who would later go on to be the head baseball coach at Yale. Perez puts the bunt back on and gets it down. Sanchez looks at second, but settles for the out at first. 1-4 on the sack, moving go tie to second. All you kids watching here, look at the ball, the bat out in front, and look at the angle of the bat, level. And also Sanchez here for all you pitchers out there, young pitchers. You've got time. Look where the Perez is. You've got time to look and see if you have a play at second base, because look where Perez is. Okay, I don't. Stop, reset, easy out at first. And what's a what's a pitcher's key there to, to determine if he has a play? Well, he's got to listen to his backs to the play and you listen to your catcher. But some catchers aren't aggressive back there. Reyes takes the curveball for ball one. Just like once again, you can see this, this is a great angle. See the bats out in front of him and how he cushions it back, almost like John McEnroe at the net when he deadens the ball. John had the greatest hands at the net of anybody I've ever seen. I always tell you, catch the ball on your bat. Yep. McEnroe had the great drop shot at the net, and that's what bunting's about, too. So you're saying Johnny Mack would have been a good bunter? I bet you Mack would have been a good bunter. I've seen him play baseball. He made a nice double play in a game. Uh, of, you know, you hesitated after you said that. But he's got to work on his hitting. <laughs> but then again, my, he told me I need to work on my backhand. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Two and zero to Reyes, and Sanchez looking like he wants no part of him. Behind three and zero, Reyes fly to left his first time up. Andy Chavez to follow. Nets have tied the game here in the second and looking to grab the lead. Reyes trying to pick up go tie from second, <laughs> and he walked him on four pitches. That's the 17th walk Reyes has drawn this year. That's in the top 10 in the league. What a change, huh? It certainly is, and it reflects in his on-base percentage, uh, and it reflects in his batting average, not swinging at bad pitches. You know, part of it is that his selection has gotten better, but let's face it, part of it is that as he hits more, pitchers are less inclined to pitch to him. It, it gets, Lou Brock told me it gets easier as you go on. You face the same pitchers year in, year out. You get a feel for what they want to do with you. Here's Chavez with two on, and Sanchez continues to miss. That's five in a row out of the strike zone. That's faced Sanchez twice last year, and he beat them both times. But it's more of a struggle for him today. Chavez popped a short his first time up. And Sanchez behind again, 2-0. And you have to figure Andy gets a good pitch to hit here. You got Beltron on deck. Rick Pranitz, the pitching coach, sprinting out to the mound. That's as fast as I've seen a pitching coach move in some time. You think he has an early flight? Maybe he's had too much coffee in the morning. It's a day game. <laughs> they make great coffee in that visitor's clubhouse. Actually, I can use a cup, to be honest with you. Here he goes. Oh, oh, man. He looked like he was, uh, you remember in, in roller derby, the whip? He looked yes. like he was getting whipped right out of that dugout. Charlie O'Connor. San Francisco Bay, Bay Bombers. Air. Bay Bay, you got it. <clears throat> Mike Gannon, the fastest man on skates. 2-0 to Chavez. And 3-0. Well, a walk would load the bases for Beltron. Got to wonder if uh, Sanchez's knee is bothering him. He got hit off a line drive off David Wright's bat back in the first. And that's going to be the end of him. I got to get somebody up. Ball four and the bases are loaded. Well, you mentioned it earlier, Keith, the difference between Sanchez's first time through the order and then the rest of the game. We flashed that number a moment ago. And, uh, you know, after getting a look at him the first time around, now the Mets are getting their second crack. He's now walked four batters in an inning and two thirds, and Beltron with a chance to give the Mets the lead with the bases loaded and two out. Well, 
That's Lee Gardner getting up. And again, the same situation for Beltron here. And he throws a curveball in the outside corner. I was going to say in Willingham last night off of Pelfrey in the first. Base is loaded on walks. First ball, fastball hitting. Beltron leads the Mets with 23 runs batted in. But now Sanchez has him in an 0 2 hole. Delgado hoping for a turn on deck. Beltron had a home run last year against Sanchez. Seven grand slams in his career. Popped it up. And Sanchez will get through it as Ramirez retreats and the Mets strand three in the second. So two innings, five left on base for the Mets. They managed to tie it on Gotai's RBI single. Ruben Gotai, his first hit as a Met, brings home Sean Green. And they've gone even with the Marlins one to one. between innings Anabel Sanchez and Rick Kranitz in discussion I don't know if it's about the knee or just about his aggression in terms of getting ahead of hitters throw strikes is what he's saying You're making things awful tough on yourself Sanchez takes a strike from Oliver Perez as we start the third inning you put away Beltron in three pitches throwing strikes and backdoor breaking ball for a strike and Perez he gets on these rolls now where everything he throws up there is a strike. He's getting into his flow here. Working quickly. And he strikes out Sanchez on three pitches. Castro will make the toss to complete the put out. Got to step on the bag. So Five last strikeouts now for Perez, first time through the order. That's the last thing that Sanchez probably wanted to do on that knee is run the first base. Oh, by the way, remember the other night when Miguel Olivo chased Paul Oduca up the first baseline yes. and tagged him out on a strikeout? Olivo apparently yesterday apologized to Loduca. Did he He's, have to? Well, he said, what I did was wrong. I didn't mean to show him up. He didn't. And, and, well, he felt that he did, and, and Loduca was upset about it. So Olivo apologized, and that's the end of that. Well, that was also the game that LaDuca said that I took my batting out on the field. Right. So LaDuca was frustrated that game also. I, I thought that was fascinating that, that Paul said that. And you know, he's, a, he's an honest guy. As Le, Ramirez lines one to Chavez for the second out. I mean, I you often hear talk about players bringing their offensive woes into the field. It's very rare that you actually hear a player say it. And LaDuca said, he said, the error that I made on that bunt where he threw the ball down the line, he said that was directly related to my hitting. I took it out on the field with him. Well, we're all, we're all human. We all are going to have our days. I mean, LaDuca, uh, 95, 99, 99% of the time, is someone that can separate his offense from his defense. Here's Dan Ugla, who doubled and scored in the first, and he takes ball one. We mentioned that Ugla has struggled at Shea. Coming into the day, he was a 116 lifetime batter in this ballpark. And the Elias Sports Bureau people dug up a fascinating statistic about hitless streaks at Shea Stadium. You know who has the second longest hitless streak at Shea in history? As Ugla grounds to third. Wright throws high, and Delgado comes off the bag, and Ugla is safe. Throwing error for David Wright. Well, we'll get back to that note there. Nice fielding by David. Two hands. There's the tap, but he can. That's the bad habit he has. And this is where most of his errors occur. occur. And it's not that high a throw, really. Let's see. That's a better angle here. Oh, yes, it was. And that's where most of his errors come from, or his throwing. And it's the routine play, Gary. So David commits his fourth error of the year. That gives an at-bat to Cabrera with a man on. Anyway, the second <coughs> longest streak of at-bats without a hit at Shea came in 1986. Daryl Strawberry. 47. 47 at-bats without a hit at Shea. I, you know, if I knew it, I, I didn't remember. I forget. 2-0 to Cabrera. That, that's unbelievable. He went from July 29th to September 7th that year without a hit at home. Amazing. Daryl, 47 at-bats. It's amazing. And the record is Bobby Klaus 
Well, that's 48. You can, that you can better understand. No, <laughs> no offense, Bobby. That's back in 65, Bobby Klaus, <laughs> who was a utility infielder, wasn't he? Yep. That's exactly what he was. And you said the Mets could hit in those days. Well, not 65. They kind of dropped. <laughs> 3 0 to Cabrera. And Perez walks him on four pitches. So after the two out error by Wright, Perez issues his first walk in three starts. Do you know the old photos they have in, in spring training in the ballpark in spring training in St. Lucie? Yeah. I'm hoping that, like in St. Louis with the new ballpark, that they have those old photos of the 62 Mets throughout the ballpark where you have that sense of tradition and history. Because the Mets now are what, over 60 years old? No. 40. 46. 40. This is the 46. Going on 50. Year. Yeah. They'll be going on 50 uh, when the stadium's up. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I think that uh, this franchise has been very good at celebrating its championship teams, you know, 69 and 86. Josh Willingham takes ball one, but hasn't always right. thrived in celebrating the, the, the tradition beyond that. People have heard of Marv Thronberry and Choo Choo Coleman. Well, show pictures of them. Yep. You know, they were the lovable Mets, the baby Mets. Well, Casey Stengel is the most remembered figure from those teams. Willingham takes a strike one and one. Willingham struck out his first time up. Well, there are only three numbers retired in Mets history, and one of them belongs to Casey. Two managers and one player. Tom Terrific. Gil Hodges number 14 the other. Full foul. Bo Porter the third base coach. In jeopardy. But I'd like to see pictures of Bobby Klaus and uh, Jim Hickman, Jerry Puchek, uh, all those guys. It'd be great. Eddie pursued. Oh God, he was it wasn't he with a Red Sox? Joe Christopher. Yes, Joe Christopher uh, and Sherman Jones. I should know the pitchers because I mean you got Roger Craig, <laughs> Al Jackson, Jack Fisher. Perez gets Willingham on the half swing. Six strikeouts for Perez over the first three innings. He works around the right air, and the Mets will work to try to take the lead in the bottom of the third. Weekday mornings before you head out the door, check out the CW11's commuter cast. From traffic tie-ups to train delays, get up to the minute time-saving traffic reports with commuter cast all morning long on the CW11 Morning News. Home third inning, Carlos Delgado leads off against Anibal Sanchez, who has walked four, given up a couple of hits, taken a shot off his knee, thrown 51 pitches, but so far has only allowed one run. He's left five men on base. And that means the Mets have left five men on base. He's walked four, as you said, in two innings. And that's what Delgado's been under. That's a big uppercut from Carlos right there. He's swinging a lot of through balls underneath the ball. One and two to Delgado. <clears throat> there they are. Do they at least have a TV or a radio up there? They got a pretty nice seat, actually. They're kind of far away, but they got a view. Maybe a little obstructed. There will be no obstructed views at City Field. And you'll be right on top of the action there, a lot closer than you are here at Shea. And Three and two to Delgado. I think we mentioned this before. If, if, you, if you're in the ballpark and you look at the upper deck, the height of the highest seat at City Field will be near the bottom of where the upper deck is at Shea. Orchard and Wright grabs the drive by Delgado for the first out. And that tells you what you need to know. I mean, all the seats. Every location is going to be better in terms of your proximity to the field. What is the seating capacity going to be? Somewhere around 45,000. That's what they've done differently in all the new ballparks. Sure. Instead of the 55, you know, 50 plus, less seats. Well, it makes sense on so many different levels. These you know, 50,000 plus seat stadiums were built for baseball and football. 
As Wright takes a strike. Of course, you'll have better hot dogs in the new ballpark. A little bit of Americana right there. <laughs> and again, Wright falls behind 0 and 2. Is that Mr. Picker? Hey, come on, where's his manners? That was an awful large, awfully large bite. <laughs> Don't talk with your mouth full. Wright fouls it away. I'm sure. <laughs> our producer Greg Picker brought his dad a hot dog. And dad was so appreciative he decided to eat it in two bites. Struck him out. Wow. So after Wright banged one off Sanchez's knee the last time. This time Sanchez gets his revenge, his first strikeout. After two sliders away and then a fastball up and in that he fouled off, he backs it up again with a fastball in. That was just outstanding pitching. So two out, and here's Sean Green, who doubled and scored in the second, and he lines a base hit into right field. So Green, after hitting his double to left, pulls this one to right, and he's two for two. 17 hits in his last 10 games. Fastball down the pipe, sinking. Look at the eyes on the ball. Look at the level follow through. That's a great shot right there. We need more of that, Webby. That is a beautiful shot of a left-hand hitter getting a, getting a line drive. I just been told we'll never get that shot. <laughs> That's only because you asked for it. <laughs> what beautiful balance. He's got such a fluid swing. Well, Sean has been phenomenal. What a great start to his season. And Mets uh, had no reason to think this was going to happen, but he has, as you say, he's adapted to what he can do now. And, and doing it to, to the best of his ability, and he's hitting over 360 now. And plus, he's playing in one of the bigger parks in the game today. Mm -hmm. Castro fly to left his first time up, and he grounds one toward the hole, base hit. Green to second, and the Mets have two aboard again. Now they left two in the first, three in the second, and they'll try and cash in this two-out opportunity in the third. <laughs> There's the hole right here. And you couldn't put it in a perfect spot, more perfect spot. Well, Cabrera not very mobile at third base. They, so fixed, the, they fixed the telestrator. Yeah, with all those lines were going in every direction last yeah, I night. Thought it was, I thought the telestrator was on drugs or something. <laughs> Here's Ruben Gotay, who drove in the Mets' only run today, and he lines one to right, Borchard closing ground. And he reels it in, and the Mets strand two more. Gotai making a nice bid, but the Mets have stranded seven runners over the first three innings. We're still tied at one. Top of the fourth at Shea. We're at a 1-1 game. Marlins and the Mets, and welcome back. I'm Kevin Burkhardt, joined now by a special guest. I'm with Debra Seidel, the Everybody Wins Foundation, the executive director. And this is really a great foundation, great things. You're here with the fourth graders of PS92 in Queens. And they're all here to cheer and let's go Mets. Tell us why you guys are here today. Well, I am just thrilled to be here. We all are. It's a special day for us. The Mets have been our partners in our Power Lunch program for seven years. And once a week, they send uh, volunteers from their organization to read with and mentor with the children at PS92. It is so wonderful that the Mets share our commitment and our mission to teach children to love reading, because we all agree that learning to love reading is the first step to academic success. Aaron Boone flies out to Beltron for the first out of the top of the fourth inning here. And last week, you get a couple of Mets at your school, actually, with Maine and Valentine were there. How did the kids receive that? Oh, it was absolutely a thrill. Every year, a couple of Mets players come and hold a reading rally at our school, at the PS92, and read aloud to the children and share stories about their life and their experiences at school and in reading and in reading to their own children. The children love it and it is a it's a real celebration of the partnership with the Mets and of the thrill of reading a good book. And they're here at the ballpark. They get a day at the ballpark and guys I don't know if you could possibly show this but this is pretty cool. The the teachers at PS 92 came up for a baseball scorecard for children. It's a little bit simplified but basically they circle in the bases when the guys get to the bases and a ton of the kids here are filling it all out so they're taking part in the game as well. Let's go back to the booth Gary and Keith guys. That's outstanding great work there and uh, their day will be complete when uh, when they get the 
the, uh, the abridged version of the Three Musketeers. Yes, the abridged. Your, your favorite book. Well, actually, <laughs> who was your favorite classic writer, Gare? Well, classic writer. Yeah, well, I don't think I was as into the classics as you were. Well, tell me who your favorite writer is. My favorite writer was Kurt Vonnegut, who just passed really? away. Really? Yeah. Okay. And was your favorite book by him? Slaughterhouse Five. Okay. I've always been a Victor Hugo fan, and not not Les Misérables. I loved the um, Notre Dame de Paris and Toilers of the Sea was just brilliant. You never cease to amaze me. Ross down looking at the breaking ball. Seven strikeouts for Oliver Perez. Well, the old slider and kind of hanging over the middle, but Cody Ross just couldn't pull the trigger. So two out of the fourth, and here's Joe Borchard. And, you know, if there was concern about Oliver Perez coming back on regular rest after 120 pitches in his last start, he's shown no cause for concern today. It shouldn't. Well, these days, when pitchers are more attuned to throwing 95 pitches, 105 pitches, 120 is, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a yellow light. I think it's great. I love it. By the way, Kurt Vonnegut was a neighbor of mine when I lived in the city in Manhattan. Is that right? He, he lived a block from me, and he always, in the summer, and he would sit on the park bench, in our property, and I'd see him all the time. Chat him up a little bit. Two and one to Borchard. Yeah, interesting man, that's for sure. Is he a baseball fan? He's a huge baseball fan. I believe a Cornell grad. My wife saw a alumna, alumnus there. Al alumna. Alumna, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, she, she would have corrected you if I did. Oh, I know. <laughs> Two and one to Borchard, and he fouls it back. Mets Weekly on SNY takes you on the field with the Mets. This week we'll visit with Howard Johnson to see how Hojo is doing in his first season on the Mets Big League coaching staff and all new Mets Weekly Saturday at 1230 exclusively on Sportsnet New York. Haji. 2-2 Two -two to Borchard. Just barely dribbled it foul. Ball pouring in on his knees. And Perez has got it going on here this afternoon. Gave up a run in the first inning. Double to Ugla, single to Cabrera, but nary a hit since. He's walked one. He's struck out seven over the first three and two-thirds. Goes full to Borchard. Well, he's well on his way to increasing that strikeout ratio. So 10 per nine innings. Struck him out. Borchard down for the second time. Eight strikeouts in four innings for Oliver Perez. He's got that slider working, and Perez is sharp today. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning on the Keo Wednesday game of the week. Oliver Perez leads off against Anibal Sanchez. And he takes a strike. Perez sacrificed his first time up. Mets have had four hits. They've left seven on base over the first three innings. And Perez grounds it toward the hole and a base hit. Third hit of the year for Oliver Perez. And the Mets get the leadoff man on in the fourth. Well, I said earlier that... <clears throat> Perez, and you can see the big hole right there. Can swing the bat. It's a threat up there. He's not an automatic out. I mean, that's a big hit there to lead off an inning for the for the Mets. And can I say this? That was false hustle by Dan Ugla. I mean, why is he diving? That ball's already by him. Who's he trying to impress? <clears throat> well, he missed the first dive. I mean, come on. Here's Reyes. I mean, hustle's great, but that's false hustle. You're tough. You don't think? Did you have a, how did you sleep last night? You all right? Oh, I got great sleep last night, all four hours of it. <laughs> great spouse at all. I had to stay up to watch Countdown <laughs> at midnight. I had to get up early to make sure we were all attuned with what went on in baseball last night. So here we are, fresh and ready to go on a Wednesday afternoon. And a long flight ahead of you. I can sleep on that. 
looking for the bunt from Reyes but he's not up there to bunt one and one to Jose who walked his last time up he's also flied out today Andy Chavez hitting second in the order incredible speed at the top of the lineup today with Reyes Chavez and Beltra on the top three and there's a strike with a changeup from Sanchez and it's one and two. You can see Boone playing behind and Perez is no threat to steal. You don't want to get give him too much. That's a, might be a little bit too much. Breaking <clears> ball misses. I mean Perez Perez doesn't run that that badly. I mean he's a decent runner once he gets going. You don't want to let him sneak one here. Because you can always push back. He, when the pitcher goes to a stretch and once he breaks from the belt to throw home, you push back. Again, Boone is new to the position, oh. and he was not covering, and Sanchez threw it anyway. And Perez will turn it second and hold there. Well, aren't we glad we focused on that? Well, that's just the pitcher having no idea what's going on. That's like, wake up. Well, it's not the fault of Boone's here. It's just a, we call a vapor lock. I mean, he's got to know you're playing behind playing behind the pitcher as it was a base runner oh well even if he had thrown it to Boone after turning it would have been a ball so <laughs> Perez would be at second anyway so with nobody out Mets have the tie breaking run at second and Reyes goes the other way down the left field line that's an extra base hit it'll give the Mets the lead Perez scores Reyes pulls into second with an RBI double and the Mets go in front two to one So after making the throwing error on the very next pitch Sanchez gives up the game altering hit. This is something that Reyes wouldn't have done in the past there. It was a breaking ball or an off speed pitch on the outside corner and he's and he waited on it and hit it where it was pitched. And that's the most improvement I've seen with Jose particularly from the left side of the plate. Still nobody out. And Chavez drops down a bunt. Sanchez looks at third. Now short arms it to first, and he gets the out. He was very fortunate there. He had no play at third because Cabrera wasn't at the bag. And then he made an awkward-looking throw to first base. Well, bring on the dancing bears. <laughs> he had him. Look at Reyes. He had him. But I don't think Cabrera was at the bag. I think that was the problem. Oh, boy. Well, you think you've seen it all. Let's see where the third baseman is. And he get back. He could have thrown it. He had him. That's okay. But he didn't reset. Think of Chavez <laughs> a sacrifice? I guess they must have, even though he was probably bunting for a hit. And that's the official scorer's judgment, yeah. correct? And they're supposed to give the hitter the benefit of the doubt. Infield in for Beltron. That's 2-0 to Carlos. This has been a situation where the Mets have struggled this year. Runners at third, less than two out. The Mets have brought in only 45%, and that's the fourth lowest percentage in the major leagues. Lee Gardner up in the Marlins bullpen. The Cardinals have been the worst in the majors, getting that runner in from third. And the Mets at 45%. The major league average is down a little bit. It's usually 59 or 60% over historically, but 55% so far this year. Beltron's had the most opportunities. He's converted 8 out of 15. Doesn't take much of a fly ball to get Reyes home. Breaking ball hit to shallow right. Borchard's got a long way to come in for it. Can't get it. Base hit. Reyes wow. trots in to score. And it's three to one New York. Wow. Now Borchard playing deep against Beltron. And he dunked one in front of him. And with the infield in, Ugla could be of no help. And it's three to one. Well, take a pick, uh, peek at how deep he's playing. And you've got to respect his power. Uh, the infield in, Ugla has no shot. And I think that Freddie. Gonzalez, the manager for the Marlins, realizes that they've got Perez out there who's throwing a good game and that can ill afford to give up another run, bringing the infield in. And Reyes, of course, going halfway as he should because the ball's caught, he can't score and a tag up anyway. So come down halfway if it drops, 
You walk home, it's caught, you go back to third. Well, that's going to be all for Anibal Sanchez. Lee Gardner will come out of the bullpen. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon. Switch to Verizon Fios TV, Internet, phone. It's the most advanced fiber optic network straight to your home. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Sterling Max and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Max. 32-year-old Lee Gardner, who pitched an inning last night and gave up a run, takes over for the Marlins. You see his 11th appearance. Gets the right-handers out. He's a sinker ball pitcher. Give up a base hit to Delgado last night. Carlos trying to keep this inning going for the Mets. We've already played it two runs in the fourth to knock Anibal Sanchez out. Now Gardner tries to put down the threat with Beltron at first and one out. Delgado has walked and fly to right, and Gardner and Trainer having trouble getting together before he even throws a pitch. Aren't you supposed to meet before? You see what happens when you don't get your rest at night? Who, me or them? Them. <laughs> <laughs> New York can kill you on day games. You know that. Well, they say the biggest problem is in Chicago with a day game after a day game. I know oh, a lot of bad headaches in Chicago, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> I've seen a few of my day. That's well, Gardner doesn't seem to want to throw a pitch. I mean, he's already called his catcher out for a consultation. He's now stepped off the rubber. <laughs> I'd like to see Beltron attempt a steal here. Put the pressure on the club. You got the momentum in your favor. Two runs in. You've lost the first two games in the series. Make it happen. Beltron with five steals and six tries this year. Nope. Fastball. Or maybe a throw over. In the air to left. And Willingham has it for the second out. And Beltron faking the go, but he's not going anywhere. Well, it's a good time to run again right here, too, with the right up. Now, I, I know that. Beltron, we talked about it before, Garrett. Doesn't like to steal, would like to leave that hole open for, for Delgado. Well, you got right up now as a right hand hitter. Try to steal a run here. Get in scoring position with two outs. Base hit makes it four to one. It was against Gardner last night that Wright pulled that double off the fence in left field. Beltron at first and two out. Mets with a three to one lead in the fourth. Lee Gardner, a guy who's kicked around for a long time, had some cups of coffee with Tampa Bay, but this is really his first extensive major league stint this year with the Marlins. Beltron with five stolen bases, only thrown out once. Pretty much straight up defensively. Right lines a base hit. Willingham gets over to try and cut it off. And he'll hold Beltron at second, throws in behind him. So right with the fourth hit of the inning. And there are two aboard for Sean Green. Well, it should be David's second hit of the game. A little out in front, but he's staying back better. Kept his hands back. Now watch his top hand come over. That's his backhand. David has such good top hand. And, you know, that's a ball he probably should go the other way with, but now he's not hitting those weak ground balls anymore to shortstop. And he's hitting line drives. So here's Green, who's already two for two, a single and a double. You see his average up to 364. He's just been raging hot. And Gardner throws one in at his feet, 1-0. and oh. Sean now has a 10-game hitting streak going. That's hot. And again, he's using the whole field. Double to left, single to right today. Beltron at second, right at first, with two down. And Gardner falls behind 2-0. Oh. Well, it's almost 
I think good for David to go to a really a terrific hitting ballpark in Arizona now breaking out of his slump four games there and yeah. then San Francisco <clears throat> and for Green he'll be returning to Arizona for the first time since the Diamondbacks traded him to the Mets last summer Ramon Castro on deck. I just think that players, I know I did, relaxed more on the road. You always feel a little more pressure. I, I hate to use that word. 3-0 to Green, and he takes a strike. Um, for lack of a better word, pressure at home. You want to do good in front of the home fans, and you can press a little bit at home. But when you get on the road, it's, the, you know, it's not the home folks. And I always loved playing on the road and was much more relaxed on the road than, than home. Uh, three and one green watches wide ball four and the bases are loaded. So Sean is on base for the third straight time. And Castro will come up with the bases full with a chance to add to the Mets lead. You know that the toughest fans are in the Northeast. I mean they they pay attention and they haven't got much patience. You got Boston Philly New York and they are the toughest fans in America. Midwest is more laid back. They're more patient. Uh, the West Coast, they're very laid back. But there's, a, there's, an, there's an immediacy here with, in, in the Northeast. They're rabid. And Castro, I say that in a good way. I know you do. Castro fouls it away. And I think it's been exacerbated recently with the advent of talk radio and internet message boards. The win every day judge players on every at bat philosophy has only become more so as the world has gotten quicker that's just the information highway now everybody has got blogs and never was blogs when I played there weren't dream seats when you played either agreed <laughs> and you weren't here when I played except the last year well I was in the stands before that you just didn't know I was here one and one to Castro I was watching Beltron at third, right at second, green at first, and two out. Watching very closely. I might have been one of those guys booing. You booed me? Not you, but there was never a need to boo you. Well, in 89, you couldn't boo me because you were working here. I will but tell you. 89 was my, my swan song. I will say this. As a fan growing up in New York and coming to Shea Stadium, there's only one player I ever booed. Who's that? And I booed him. For an entire season because he deserved it. Richie Hefner. Richie okay. Hefner came to New York in 19. He wasn't happy he here. Said he didn't want to be here and played like it, and you couldn't help but boo. One and one to Castro. And he takes it low. Well, Richie, did he play some first base here? Third base. Okay, I, I would remember I played first base, so he would come to like a Richie highlight New York. Oh gosh, sorry I asked. Well, he's from, he was from Boston, right? Twenty in twenty in, tw in twenty twenty words or less, Richie. You like it here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he didn't. We didn't either. It's a shortstop, and Ramirez will go to second for the Forest. The Mets have now left ten runners on base in the first four innings, but they grabbed the lead thanks to Annabelle Sanchez. Throwing the ball away and then giving up that double to Reyes. Beltron's pop fly single play to another run, and the Mets are up three to one. Here's the Mets' upcoming schedule. Remember, all Mets home games on SNY are available in HD, presented by IO Digital Cable. Do you see in HD? Mets are off to Arizona after the game today. Three night games and a Sunday afternoon affair at what is now known as Chase Field. Then three games in San Francisco at what is now known as AT&T Park. It's tough to keep up with these things. I quit a long time ago. And the Mets are home weekend after next against the first place Milwaukee Brewers who have the best record in the National League. Matt Trainer leads off against Oliver Perez and takes a strike. And remember, if you're in the car, it's Howie and Tom. Every Mets game on Sports Radio 66 WFAN. Matt Trainer struck out his first time up. Perez has fanned eight over the first four innings. Two big numbers in the first four innings. Eight, the number of strikeouts for Perez, and ten, the number of men the Mets have left on base. That's hard to do. 
10 LOBs in four innings. One and two to trainer. Matt Lindstrom, the former Met farmhand, up in the Marlins bullpen with the pitcher spot due up next. Eric Reed in the on deck circle to pinch hit. And did he go? He went around strike three. Nine strikeouts for Oliver Perez, and that matches his season high. Time for a baseball day in New York update. Let's go to the studio and Matt Yaloff. All right, Gary, the news on Philip Hughes, not good. He's going to be DL four to six weeks is the prognosis. After pulling the hammy, he heard it pop while throwing a no hitter. He had one into the seventh, had to leave the game last night in Texas, Gary. It's almost unbelievable what has happened to the Yankee starting pitching so far this year. Well, here's the last strikeout, and a lot of strikeouts on this pitch. Slider in the dirt. Remember, this is an all right-handed lineup. So he's getting some late bite on that breaking ball in the dirt. Eric Reed takes a strike, one and one. Reed picked up his first hit of the year yesterday on a ground ball to first base when Mike Pelfrey didn't get over to cover in time. That was the last man Pelfrey's faced in an otherwise, you'd have to say, terrific performance. I mean, he had a difficult first inning, but even though the Mets lost the ball game, Pelfrey pitched so encouragingly after the first yesterday you'd have to say that it was it was almost like a victory and he could have finished that seventh inning and that ball hit in the hole on Delgado he was late coming to the bag and Delgado made the nice diving play if he had broke off the mound that was two outs he might have walked in there and had a just seven strong one and two to read and he fouls it away. Eric Reed was one of the competitors for the center field job for the Marlins this spring. It was won by Alejandro de Aza, but he's hurt right now. In there for a call strike three. Ten strikeouts for Oliver Perez. Uh, Perez has struck at as many as 14 in a game, and he's on his way toward that. You know, he thought it was high, and it was in today's game, borderline high. In 2007, Hyundai, the Mets, and Sportsnet New York are teaming up to strike out cancer. For every K the Mets pitching staff registers, Hyundai, the Mets, and Sportsnet New York will make a donation to the Hope and Heroes Children's Cancer Fund. Go to www.hopeandheroes.org. Hanley Ramirez takes up and away. Ramirez struck out in the first, lined out to left in the third. Oliver Perez struck out 14 for the Pirates against Houston in 2004. That's his high water mark. And slider in for a strike, one and one. What was interesting in his 10 strikeouts through this, but this fifth inning, is that he's had two strikeouts in each inning. That's pretty consistent. It was an early season afternoon game here at Shea in 1970. When Tom Sievert tied the major league record at the time by striking out 19 against the San Diego Padres. Big Tommy George. He, he did it by striking out the last 10 in a row, which is still a major league record. In fact, Jake Peavy the other day came very close to tying that record. He struck out nine in a row. And wound up striking out 16 in that game. But he couldn't get to Seavers 10. 3 and 1 to Hanley Ramirez. In the air to right center. Beltron cutting across. And he runs it down to retire the side. Seven in a row retired by Oliver Perez. 10 strikeouts through five innings. And the Mets with a 3 to 1 lead as we go to the bottom of the fifth. The Cyclones are Brooklyn. Tickets for the Cyclones 2007 season are on sale now. Get your tickets at Keyspan Park online at brooklyncyclones.com by calling 718-507-TIXX or at Shea Stadium. It's a hot ticket. Get it now. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Quack, quack. <laughs> Who has the highest career batting average at Shea? Wow. Minimum 100 plate appearances. 
That's a tough one. Just stew on that one. Former Met farmhand Matt Lindstrom comes on to pitch for the Marlins. And so far, doubly tough on lefties. Again, way too many walks. Seven walks in 11 innings. Ruben Gotai drove in the first Met run today with a single in the second. Then lined out to right to end the third. His first start as a Met, and it's going well. There's a strike, one on one. And Lindstrom throws a strike. Mets traded Henry Owens and Matt Lindstrom to the Marlins and picked up Jason Vargas and Adam Bostic, a couple of younger pitchers in that deal. Lindstrom's 27. Over the mound, off Lindstrom's glove. Barehanded by Ramirez, and he throws him out. Hanley Ramirez with a nice barehanded pickup. 1 6 3 put out for the first down. Well, nice play here by Ramirez. Just ticks the glove. Gets the nice big hop here. Nice barehand. Good hands. Very nice. He's a fine young player. You know, here we are kind of in the middle of the game, Gare, and this game's just kind of meandering around a little bit. But you know something? That's the beauty of baseball. You just don't need all that bombardment that you get with commercials and stuff. Look at that. It's nice and quiet. You can, can talk to your friend. You know what I'm saying? Look well, you know what really helps if you're not bombarded by sound and it's kind of a lazy weekday afternoon? You tell me. Snacks. Snacks. They even sell water here. I never heard that before. I heard a guy that saying, water, get your free water here. Not free. <laughs> I don't think it's free. But, you know, that is the beauty of the game, is it not, though? We, we need snacks. I'm just telling you. If we're going to have a lazy weekday afternoon game where well, not a whole lot is going on, we need something. We need nachos. We need hot dogs. Budweiser. Well, maybe after the game. But look, people are taught well. See? See, look, that's the right idea. It's good. People are talking to each other. It brings everybody together. It's relaxed. That's the, the beauty. Football requires, your, has an intensity. Basketball, it's nonstop. Baseball, summer, day game, warm weather. Talking with your friends, your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad, blah, blah, blah. It's great. I love it. That's really what you and I are doing after all. Just sitting and talking to a pal. Shallow center, and it will drop for a base hit. And Perez has his second hit of the game. Oliver Perez having himself some kind of afternoon. Well, Perez here gets his second hit, and you can see Cody Ross in center playing shallow, but that's a nice wedge. We well, talked earlier that Florida doesn't have a great defensive outfield, but they don't cover a lot of ground out there. Well, they really don't have a center fielder without uh, Deaza, their starter. I mean, Amezuga did a nice job last night, but he's an infielder playing the outfield. Ross is more of a corner outfielder playing center field. Reyes drove in the lead run for the Mets with an opposite field double in the fourth. Reyes now has ten doubles, five triples, and two home runs. Oh, and he's also walked today. He's got 17 walks. And he takes ball one. So he's a, he's, he's increased his on-base percentage, which is just... I, mean, he's, I never figured, Gary, that he would turn into a guy with a, that would have a good on-base percentage. Well, he went from 302 years ago to 354 last year. He started today at 432. And it, it's gone up a, a tad today. I mean, he's not going to be at 432 at the end of the year, I wouldn't expect. But 380 would be nice. He would take that. Mm -hmm. With his extra base power, Lindstrom with a good fastball away, and it's one and two. 
Well, this is a pitch that he has a little trouble with sometimes, and that's that good fastball or breaking ball, fastball away, and that's not a good swing because he steps in the bucket a little bit. He has that tendency from the left side to step in the bucket. One and two to Reyes. Two and two. By the way, um, you think Matt Lindstrom knows that Aaron Boone's not holding against Perez at first base? Um, I would bet on it. I hope. You think that point has been made? Well, the first baseman's got to you know, let the pitcher know, and I'm sure they do. Well, yeah. Anibal Sanchez didn't know. And he threw to the unoccupied base in the last inning, and it cost him an error and eventually cost him his spot in the game. Reyes taps one. Ugla will get the fourth, but he kicks oh, it. Boy. And Perez is safe at second. Uh, Ugla had the easiest play in the world to just toss it to Ramirez for the fourth, but he dropped it. He kicked it. Making like Doug Flutie. Well, this is Reyes is all a part of this. Rushing for the double play, and he backhanded it for some reason. The left fielder, Andy yeah, I don't know why he backhanded it. Just catch it with your glove face open and shovel it to the shortstop. Well, the other thing is, I mean, he, there's no chance he's getting a double play on a slowly hit ball with Reyes running. Well, I don't mind his aggressiveness in trying to turn two but you can't backhand that ball you're in front of it and you're going to backhand it so the air on Ugla gives the Mets two aboard with one out for Andy Chavez who's 0 for 1 a walk and a sacrifice today Mets with a 3 to 1 lead in the fifth and Chavez fouls it off Liston throws pretty good he's got a good little fastball straight Throws hard, got a good little breaking ball. I can see why Florida was interested in him. He spent five years in the Mets farm system, topped out at double A last year. Well, it's quite apparent to me now, we've been able to observe general manager Omar Minaya and his philosophies in building this organization. And it has his imprint now he's been here long enough Omar likes getting that young talent and I like that he, I mean, go tie 24 years old okay he's had a couple times in the big leagues with Kansas City he's 24 years old he's got the future in front of him take a chance on youth and the other thing is especially when you talk about pitchers you know the Mets dealt Henry Owen and Matt Lindstrom both of whom can throw hard but both of whom are in their upper 20s graded them for some younger pitchers but not only that you know, Rick Peterson has input into some of those deals for pitchers as well, and the Mets are not an organization that surely looks at velocity. Lindstrom's a velocity guy. Misses with a breaking ball, and it's one and two. Lindstrom is 27. Now, his progress pushed back a little bit because he did a two-year Mormon mission when he was 19 and 20 years old, so he's developed a little bit later. Gets away from Trainer, and the runners will advance. Like that ball hit the umpire in the foot. Well, this is going to be a wild pitch. It looks like a splitter of some sort. Yep, and that's a tough chance for Trainer, the catcher, and very alertly. Oliver Perez. You saw Reyes checking first to see if Perez was running. Oliver's run the base as well today. Now the infield comes halfway in with runners at second and third and one out. Mets already with a two run lead. And Chavez just got a piece of it. A little emergency hack to stay in the at bat. And he's one of those guys that has that swing where he's running the first base. Well, he has not yet struck out this year. In fact, he's now gone, what, 42 plate appearances going back to last year without striking out. Pull toward the hole. Pass Douglas, base hit. Perez scores. Here comes Reyes. Two-run hit for Andy Chavez. 5-1 to one New York. Well, 
Chicago was playing just far enough in, playing halfway, that he couldn't spear that ground ball with the dive. Well, Ugg was right there on your screen and just out of his reach. Doesn't have the greatest of reins, and I think that the defense of the Marlins is kind of showing up today in today's ball game. It's not the greatest defensive club, and Reyes, of course, with his speed. And the Freddy Gonzalez had no option here to, to bring the infield in twice. He's been burned twice with the infield halfway or in. So five to one New York, and Chavez draws a throw. And it's been a particularly tough day for Ugla. Remember, Gotai hit that ground ball that drove in the first Met run that he probably could have knocked down, but he had his glove in the wrong spot. And he made the error that set this inning up and couldn't get that ground ball by Chavez. Beltron drove in a run with a fly ball single in the fourth inning, his 24th RBI. Well, here's the double play. It wasn't a double play ball with Reyes, but you see how he backhanded it? And then he had to flip his glove back around for the transfer to his. Chavez runs. Boone handles the ground ball. Beltron retired for the second out as Andy takes second. But you saw in that last replay. If he hadn't have backhanded it, he could have shoveled it. And you see Boone playing behind Oliver here. Now watch the backhand. Now he's got to bring the glove around to his throwing hand, and that was the difference in the exchange there, whereas if he caught it with his glove facing the ball, he can shovel it. Carlos Delgado will get an intentional walk here, and they'll pitch to David Wright with two men on. Even though Delgado's been struggling, they show respect for him and fill the empty base and bring up the right hand batter. So, Wright, who had a base hit his last time up, will get a chance to enhance this inning. That's got two in the fourth to knock out Anibal Sanchez. They've added two here in the fifth against Matt Lindstrom. I tell you what, I would, with Delgado struggling, I would have pitched to him. I can understand Freddy Gonzalez's Gonzalez philosophy here, and you can't second. It's not a second guess. But with a struggling Delgado, I'd take my chances and let Lindstrom go after him. And it's quite apparent that Wright is on his way. Well, he's hit two balls hard today. First one, he banked off the knee of Sanchez. That turned into an out. Then after striking out in the third, he singled to left in the fourth. After a three-hit game last night, including his first home run of the year. You don't want to intentionally walk someone with runners on base to a good hitter and an RBI hitter. I mean, it's, uh, he, the, the, you accept the challenge. Two on and two out. Two runs in. And a check swing foul ball. right into the corner of the Mets dugout. I don't think David he picked that ball up at all. It was just a check swing for the fastball in the outer half. This is a fastball belt high out over the plate. Good pitch to hit. Is he looking for a, a breaking ball or he just didn't pick it up? I don't know. I don't know, but he hit it right into the bat rack. Almost got his hitting <laughs> coach. And David finds himself in a two strike hole. Chavez at second. He drove in a couple of runs with a base hit. Delgado at first with two out. That trainer has worn out a path to that mound today. Well, he's probably saying you're 0-2 now. You don't have to necessarily don't make a fat one here. You're ahead in the count. Be smart. David lays off the breaking ball. Trainer keeping that one in front of him, one and two. Nice block. Watch the catcher just use his body, smother that ball. That's excellent fundies. In his wife's sport, it's called a dig. His wife is Misty May, the Olympic beach volleyball champion. Two and two now to right. In fact, Matt Trainer uh, 
went to the same gym this winter that his wife has used to enhance his agility, his quickness, his digging ability. Line drive, base hit. Right as his second hit, Chavez speeding around third. He'll come in to score, and it's 6-1 to one New York. Well, three hits last night, two more hits today, and David Wright pointed back in the right direction. Just amazing. An uh, entirely different hitter. Fastball in, not enough, but David now showing the quick bat. And Rick Kranitz is going out in the mound. I just wouldn't have pitched to David, and then Indy's going to score easy with his speed, but I just would have taken my chances with Delgado, and only because it was a slumping Delgado. Walk the guy in front of me. Hey. He's just asking for trouble with good hitters. You know, we saw that a couple of years ago when uh, David was hitting behind Cliff Floyd. Every time they walked Floyd to pitch to right, David would come through. Now with a little more of a reputation, it's not going to happen as often, but it did there, and he came through again. Sean Green, two for two in a walk today, a single and a double. Mets now have 11 hits and leads six to one. And by the way, too, uh, a Met club <clears throat> collectively that's been kind of struggling offensively, well, three straight games with uh, double digit and hits. Last night they had 11 hits but scored just two runs. Today they've left 10 on base, but they've still scored six. Nothing to the green. Now, granted, uh, not to throw, douse the party. I, well, I don't. Know. It, it, this is the worst pitching staff, earned run average wise, in the National League. But still, it's promising that the Mets have been able to put together now collectively as a team double digits and hits for three straight games. Well, they'll face a very good pitching staff when they go to Arizona this weekend. They'll face young Micah Owings tomorrow night. He's pitched well, but he's been hurt recently. Green fouls it away. Then they get Randy Johnson on Friday night. Brandon Webb, the defending Cy Young Award winner on Saturday night, and then Levon Hernandez on Sunday. So that's a pretty good test in that four-game series against the Diamondbacks. Delgado at second, right at first with two out. Mets have three runs home here in the fifth against Matt Lindstrom. Oh, and two to Green, and he lays off. Remember, the guy who got this inning started for the Mets was Oliver Perez. He's done a great job with the bat today. Sacrifice and two hits, and he scored two runs. It's been a big day for Perez all the way around. Green goes down swinging to end the inning, but eight men come to bat. The Mets plate three and give Oliver Perez a six to one lead. It's been a big day for Perez. Ten strikeouts in the first five innings. Couple of hits to boot. Oliver Perez bidding for his third win and well on his way. Sixth inning, Dan Ugla leads off against Oliver Perez and takes the slider for ball one. Ugla doubled and scored back in the first, the only Florida run. In fact, Ugla doubled with one out. Cabrera singled in that first inning, and Perez has not allowed a hit since. Balls behind Ugla, 2 0. Oh. And the pitch count, very reasonable. 72 pitches as he works to the leadoff man in the sixth. And he throws a strike, and Perez has continued what we talked about right at the outset, Keith. He's retired the leadoff batter in every inning. Well, the pitch, the pitch counts at 72 through five innings because of the 10 strikeouts. Well, you'd sign up for this, wouldn't you? Every time out. Wes Obermuller is up in the Florida bullpen. He's been working as a starting pitcher for the Marlins. But now that... Ricky Nolasco is back from the disabled list. Sergio Mitre should be back soon. Obermuller moved to the bullpen. Three and two now to Ugla. He 
Miguel Cabrera waiting on deck then Josh Willingham here in the sixth Perez has not walked a leadoff hitter this year and he doesn't walk ugly either Beltron retreating and he runs it down for the first down eight in a row retired by Perez before the Mets take the field get ready for game time on SNY Sportsnet New York always leads off with North Fork Bank pregame live setting the lineup before every Mets game on SNY here's Cabrera who singled in a run of the first walked in the third Takes a slider for a strike. Just seems that Perez is just so confident right now and such a found his groove. No, no wasted motion. Look at that. You see that uh, Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee cup? Well, Cabrera hit several balls off that cup during batting practice today. He was he was creaming the coffee cup. <laughs> what a two to Miguel. Nice try. Just missed, and it's two and two. He just missed with a fastball, 0 and 2 outside corner of the pitch prior, and he came back in. Hey, if you're going to miss, you're going to miss in. He's just really in a groove. Looks just silky smooth, the motion, the effort. 2 2. Popped up. Go tie. Two away. That's nine in a row for Perez. So he hasn't struck out a batter in this inning after striking out two in each of the first five innings, but it's hardly mattered. The left fielder, Josh Willingham. Dontrell Willis not pitching in this series. Dontrell's been living right. Yes, he has. Just had a baby. He's five and one. With an ERA over five. Yep. That horrible first inning against the Mets down in Florida. Gave up four runs before retiring a batter. Willingham with an ugly swing. Willingham's already struck out twice today after punishing the Mets in the first two games of this series. Willingham drove in all five runs for the Marlins last night. Only two other players in Marlins history have ever knocked in all of the team's runs in a game in which they've scored five or more. Terry Pendleton did it back in 95. And Carlos Delgado did it two years ago as a Marlin. One and one to Willingham. Paul Nauert, the home plate umpire, has not been generous with that outside corner to Perez. You see Castro holding the glove right there in that strike and holding it. For, he's holding it there for the umpire to see. Now this one he missed. But the pitch prior was away, and he holds that glove there to say, okay, let the umpire get in a good look. That, you know, that's on the outside corner. You missed it. And the umpire says, I don't care how long you hold it there. It's not a strike. Right. <laughs> there is for a rare time today behind in the count. He's walked one and struck out ten. Allowed just one run and two hits. He walks Willingham. So a two out walk, second given up by Perez. And remember, we talked about at the outset the fact that Perez had thrown 120 pitches in his last start. I wonder First baseman, if they're going to limit Boone. him today to something, you know, more in the, the 95 or 100 range. What's he at right now? 86. You know, maybe he finishes this sixth inning. Oh, that would go seven. Stretch it out. Yeah, he's do a turn and bat in the bottom of the inning. I'm, I'm just wondering at least seven because they, they don't like to push these guys back to back starts to those higher pitch counts. I would never be satisfied as a starter to go six seven at the minimum. But then again I'm a Neanderthal man so well I mean 
the Neanderthals always went nine. <laughs> <laughs> There's something good to be said about them. Aaron Boone takes on the inside corner. He thought that pitch was a ball. Oh. Let's see the glove. Borderline inside strike. Glove didn't move. 0-2 oh to Boone, who's 0 for 2 today. And a looping line drive that'll fall on the left for a base hit. Willingham to second, only the third Marlins hit and their first since the first inning. That's a slider he got up, one of the few sliders that he gets upstairs. That was a hanger, but got it in enough to jam him. So now Cody Ross, who has popped to third and taken a call third strike. Remember Ross had the <laughs> worst numbers in spring training oh, this year. Oh, gosh, I mean, he had a miserable spring. I mean, we thought Sean Green had a bad spring, but Ross hit like 100. He was brutal. But he's hitting 300 in the regular season, at least he was coming into today. And he takes the backdoor slider for a strike. Cody Ross in a game against the Mets last year down in Florida hit three home runs in one game with a small asterisk. The third one was foul. But it was like a 10 run game at the time. I guess they they gave it to him. Well here's a little what you said about maybe six for Perez. He's losing a little bit of his precision with his pitches here which might be a sign of I don't know tiring lack of focus I don't know I can't believe he's tired foul back I just have this feeling that if, if you know if he's able to negotiate this inning that they'll bat for him at the bottom of the inning just a guess and I just wouldn't want to entrust the game to the bullpen you get seven in and you're getting to your you're getting to your set your setup man and Phone's and ringing. your closer. But the phone's ringing down there now. I hear you. <laughs> One and two to Cody Ross. Overthrew that fastball. And if you remember, Gary, this last start that Perez had against the Nationals gave up the run early, the three runs early, and then got to the sixth inning and kind of lost focus again. The same sort of thing happened. Remember Willie let him bat in that game with the Mets down by a run with the bases loaded. Then he gave up a run late. Ooh. Ross gets ahead of the slider and pulls it foul. You see he's done well later in games when he's had the opportunity. But again I, I think they're they're so careful now in, in charting pitchers. You know they're not afraid to extend them but they don't want to extend them multiple times in a row especially going on regular rest which Perez is today every day Joe Smith got two big outs last night and getting ready again just missed and it's three and two to Ross well, he's got to take a chance here and just run a fastball away watch his reaction it's missed it missed outside yeah, that, that was not a strike. Not quite certain of that reaction or the reason for it. I just think he wants to get in the dugout out of this inning. Runners get set to go with three and two and two down. Payoff to Ross. Oh they boy. walked him and the bases are loaded. So after retiring the first two here in the sixth, Perez with two walks sandwiched around the base right hit. Pedro Feliciano joins Joe Smith in the bullpen and Willie Randolph's running out to the mound. Usually when he runs, that means he's not going to make the pitching change right now. He's just out there for a motivational talk. Well, this is the bison time for Smith and Feliciano to get ready. And to me, <clears throat> I always feel that if you're buying time for your relievers to get ready, walk it to the mound. Take your time. Let the umpire come out and break up the tea party and then walk back to the dugout. And you can give that's around close to what, three minutes? That's get your relievers ready. I think that one was more about refocusing Perez. 
getting in his face a little bit. Here's Joe Borchard. Struck out twice today, and Harris misses high. It's amazing, isn't it? It's just looking as though he's gotten out of sync all of a sudden. Trying to nurse a third out, and adios. Well, I got a feeling this is his last batter. Borchard lines it right to right, but he bumps it. Two runs will score, and it's six to three. A line drive right to David Wright, and he simply muffed it. Well, a lot of times in day games, there's a lot of people in the stands that have white shirts. This is a bullet. And I think nine times out of ten, David's going to make that play. But he didn't make it here. He didn't get his glove up in time. It's the second error of the game on David Wright. The first one came on a throw and did not affect the scoring. This one does. It brings home two runs. It'll also take Oliver Perez out of this game. Willie Randolph takes the ball. And Perez, after a tremendous outing, leaves after five and two-thirds. Harris struck out 10, but the call to the bullpen is brought to you by Verizon. Switch to Verizon Fios. TV, Internet, phone. It's the most advanced fiber optic network straight to your home. This year, when you can't be home to watch your Mets on SNY or CW11, check out MLB.tv. You can log on to the Internet to watch every out-of-market Mets game of the season live. Catch those you missed on demand or listen to every radio broadcast live. Sign up today for MLB.tv and on Parallel Live Baseball Experience. For more details, visit Mets.com, where baseball is always on. Well, Oliver Perez had the first two men out in the sixth with a couple of walks, a single, and then David Wright's error bring in two runs, and Joe Smith brought in to try and get the Mets out of the jam. Smith got two big outs behind Mike Pelfrey last night, striking out Hanley Ramirez and getting Dan Ugla on a grounder. And Freddie Gonzalez is going to pull out the stops here and send a Mike Jacobs to bat for Matt Trainer. And that's a good move right there by Freddie Gonzalez because Jacobs is a home run threat. He's a big swinger and also a left-hand hitter. So it's the right move. He's got the right guy up to get him back in this ball game. Tying run at the plate with two on and two out. And Joe Smith, who's been practically perfect, Brought on to try and get Jacobs, and he misses badly with the slider, ball one. Smith is not allowed to run yet in his rookie season, and he's stranded all but one of the runners he's inherited. You, you just can't do a better job on the mound than Smith has, and to do it as an absolutely raw rookie has been phenomenal. And the slider misses. I think that would fool the umpire 2 0. Oh. And didn't miss by much. This is a backdoor slider. Castro set up away and just low. It wasn't outside. So now Joe's behind 2 0. Oh. Throws another one, a sinker, and it's 2 and 1 to Jacobs. Well, he wanted it away. Look at Castro and look where it wound up inside corner. Jacobs getting the day off today with the Mets starting a left-hander. But Jake has had a fine early season, hitting 311. Ooh. On the inside corner with the slider, and it's two and two. That is wicked. You know, left-hand hitter's gonna think he's a sinker ball pitcher, gonna stay away, and he's got this weapon. But again, that is a good slider. Again, Castro was set up on the other side of the plate. So the location may not be perfect, but the results are good. Two out, two on, two and two to Jacobs. Struck him out. Joe Smith does it again. Comes out of the bullpen to strike out Mike Jacobs and strand two. Joe Smith just keeps on trucking. 6-3 Mets. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning at Shea. Earlier today, I cut off with Tony Bernazard and just picked his brain about how the minor leagues are going for the Mets. 
I asked him to name me a few players that are really doing well. One of the guys that he said that's caught their eye is Miguel Negron, an outfielder that was a former number one pick of the Toronto Blue Jays. Blue Jays kind of thought he had reached his potential. They let him go. The Mets signed him at the end of spring training. Guy's been doing great in Binghamton right now, batting 307. He's got a couple home runs, 14 RBIs in 18 games. One of the names to watch. And guys, by the way, watching Joe Smith come in again at the end of the inning to do what he's been doing all year long. We're working on a piece now I think is going to be a lot of fun. I had the chance yesterday to ride the subway with Joe to the game from his house. And we talked about a lot of different things. He's such a very laid back, very cool guy. But I was so interested in hearing his story, how he basically missed most of his junior and senior year in high school due to arm surgery, then was cut from his, his college team as a freshman year, and still here he is today, being as good as he is in a rookie as the Mets. So we'll, maybe you might hear that on the West Coast when we go out. Let's go upstairs, Gary and Keith, guys. Ramon Castro greets Wes Obermuller with a fly ball to center, and Cody Ross makes the catch for the first out. The former Milwaukee Brewer Obermuller pitching in relief for the first time Ruben for the Marlins. Time. See, it's his third game, and it's his first relief appearance. He's had those two appearances or starts. And like Gary said, now with the Marlins getting their relief, their, their starters back, he's been pushed into the bullpen. Miguel Olivo now doing the catching after Trainer left for a pincher. Olivo batting ninth, so he'll lead off the seventh inning. Obermuller hitting eighth. Ruben Gotai takes ball one. Gotai in his first start as a Met. Singled home a run in the second inning. Mets lead six to three as they bat in the sixth. Well, how about that, Joe Smith? Well, I think we're about to see another first for Joe Smith. His first big league plate appearance. There's a strike to go tie. Given that batting helmet a workout for the first time, look how shiny it is. That batting helmet has not been in a game. Go tie with a check swing bloop. And Cabrera's got it two away. Well, before the big Joe Smith first plate appearance, baseball day in New York updated. Matt Yellow. All right, Gary, after taking a suspended game from the Pirates earlier in the day, the Cubs and Bucks playing another one, and Alfonso Soriano getting it done, his second home run in two days. It's the Cubs up 4 1 in the fifth. All right, Matt, and here is Matt, uh, Joe Smith, and takes a good hack at the first pitch and fouls it off. Sure does. The first, always a first for everybody. Well, Joe's in his 16th game now, getting to bat for the first time. Well, that wasn't such a good cut. It's 0-2. <laughs> that, that's, that's his personality right there, you folks out there. He is just such a... He's a character and he takes the breaking ball for a third strike so a very quick first at bat for Smith but he'll go back where he belongs out on the mound for the seventh inning. Welcome to the big leagues kid. <laughs> Before we start the seventh Aflac. inning let's answer our Aflac trivia question highest batting average at Shea Stadium career Gene Richard speedster probably had a lot of infield hits Gene could play a little bit he wasn't much of a fielder but left hand hitter leadoff hitter he could run he could run good guy he could hit Miguel Olivo just came on in that double switch and he takes ball one Olivo the regular catcher one for nine in this series and you see that average just 213 for the year he's tried to be a little more patient this year Olivo has it may take him a while to figure out how to be patient and still get his hits. Well they're not throwing him no first first ball fastballs anymore. That got around the league real quick. Last year when Olivo put the first ball in play he hit 444. And I bet you 95 percent of them were fastballs. Takes a sinker two and one. So we're going to look at it. Young Mighty Joe looks like he wants to get down like Bradford, but comes a little more sidearm. He's not a submariner. He's a sidearm delivery. I love how he, he bends all the way over, but then he straightens up his body before he throws the pitch. That might be deceptive to the hitters. Yeah. He comes inside, misses. Now remember, he's 
He's a rookie. It's the first time through the league. He hasn't even been through the through the league once. And hitters are gonna take notice. I mean, he's got good stuff. They're gonna make their adjustments. And the breaking ball in there for a call strike three. I'm telling you, the first time we saw Joe Smith this spring, that's the pitch that he threw the lastings millage in an interest squad game to get him in exactly the same fashion. And that opened eyes. Although well, Castro is not set up away, right down the middle. So this might have been by design. And you watch him lift up upon delivery. He kind of lifts up his from his waist. He's been fabulous. That is 17 strikeouts in 14 innings for Joe Smith. Ball one to Hanley Ramirez. 17 strikeouts, five walks, and seven hits allowed in 14 innings. You start running out of superlatives, and the guy hasn't, you know, he hasn't been in the big leagues more than a month. Well, I like the fact that he uses both sides of the plate to both left and right hand hitters. Little tapper. Castro pops out to get it. And there are two out. You know, usually submariners, which are sinker ball pitchers, are, are fairly predictable. Second and watch Ramon Danielle. here with the quick out, quick out of the box. Knows he has plenty of time. Weekday afternoons between 4 and 6. Log on to CW11.com for live traffic updates from the CW11's commuter cast. Check with commuter cast before you hit the road to find the fastest way home or the easiest way to shave. We'll kick in about a half hour from now. Here's Dan Ugla. And he takes a slider for ball one. Ugla a double in three trips. Is that a rough day in the field? Each team has made two errors in this game. Both met errors committed by David Wright and leading to a couple of unearned runs. Oliver Perez went five and two thirds, allowed three hits, three runs, but only one of them earned. He walked three and he struck out 10. The 17th time in Perez's career, he struck out 10 or more. And there's the unofficial captain on the field over for some words of advice. Joe's got those uh, rosy cheeks, doesn't he? Is he a Scotsman? Or Irish? What is Smith, English? It, it's Ohioan. Smith is a very... Smith could be anything. He's English. <laughs> Two and one to Ugla. I mean, it could have been changed. <laughs> right? That's true. Elias Smith and Jones. Three and one now to Ugla. Well, he's now the least anonymous Joe Smith in the U.S. of A. And he walked him. So Ugla draws a two out walk. And that gives Cabrera an opportunity with a man on. Third baseman, Miguel Cabrera. Well, the Mets, five games over 500 coming into the day, and the Marlins starting to move up on their heels, just two and a half behind the Mets under their first-year skipper, Freddy Gonzalez. And those Phillies are kind of making a move, too. It's got to be so odd for this Marlins team. They enjoyed such success last year compared to expectations. Their manager won Manager of the Year honors, and they got fired. And they've got to adjust to a, a new boss with a, a little different approach. And, you, you know, you, you understand managers get fired. It happens all the time. But to have a guy who enjoyed as much success as Joe Girardi did last year get fired, I wonder what kind of impact that would have on a team and, and in terms of their adjustment to the new guy. Well, as a player, you got to play for the manager. It's not, it's, it's not your decision who the skipper is and you know what you're in the big leagues you play for anybody they put out there slider in for a strike one and one to Cabrera and Cabrera
Herrera pulls it down to third. Right handles it on the backhand. And this throws on target to end the inning. So another hitless performance by Joe Smith. A couple of strikeouts, a couple of ground balls in his inning in a third. Seventh inning stretch time. And it's 6-3 to three New York. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning in our Kia Wednesday game of the week. Mets with a 6-3 to three lead. Top of the batting order. Jose Reyes up for the fifth time, and he pops it up. Ramirez out. Willingham in. One away. So one out and nobody on. Andy Chavez coming up. As we check out our New York Lottery box score. Ruben Gotai with an RBI in his first start as a Met. Andy Chavez with a two-run single that extended the Mets' lead. Another good day for David Wright at the plate with two more hits. Here's Chavez, and he takes ball one from Wes Obermuller, who starts his second inning in relief. Chavez one for two, a walk and a sacrifice. He's driven in two runs. And he takes a changeup for a strike. Obermuller came out of the University of Iowa. He was drafted in the second round by Kansas City. What do you suppose his record was at the University of Iowa in his last year there that he was taken in the second round? He was 1 and 9 with a 6.83 ERA. That's really? Why, that's why they have scouts. A little tapper and a foul ball grabbed by Olivo. The wow. reason was that Obermuller was a shortstop and outfielder for most of his high school and college career. And it moved to the mound to his last year at Iowa. And you know, the scouts saw arm strength. They saw potential. Right. And so despite the miserable record, he got taken in the second round. Obermuller spent a few years with the Brewers. Last year pitched in Japan and then bounced to Florida. Now 30 years old. Back to the mound. And Obermuller makes the play. Two out. So Obermuller has been the most effective the Florida pitcher here. this afternoon. He's retired five in a row. Trying to keep his team in the game. Well, the Mets have had six base on balls in today's game. And again, 11 hits. So just too many base runners. Well, the Mets have left 12 runners on base. In fact, they left 12 on in the first five innings. And you hope not to rue that later on. Beltron fouls it away. Carlos one for three to walk today. Well, he's been bemoaning that the last few days. Wasted opportunities. The Mets batting average with runners in scoring position is not where he'd like to see it. Even though the Mets are still third in the league in runs scored. Oh, the planes are landing over center field now. So they're taking off. It's been a wind shift. I love it when the planes land over center field. What? Where does the wind need to be from? Well, you always got to land to a headwind and take off to a headwind. Right? Not a tailwind. I'm very impressed. I'm not a pilot, and I don't play one on TV. Used to always drive to the uh, drive to the park or whatever I was doing. However, I got to the park, but it was in Rusty's meat wagon. You'd always look when you got near La <laughs> when you got near LaGuardia. You'd look and see if where the planes were landing or taking off. And when you saw that, you said, "Oh, great!" And Beltron strikes out on the changeup. I want to hear about Rusty's meat wagon, but we can do that when we come back. <laughs> Beltron goes down swinging. It's on to the eighth here at Shea, six to three, New York. Eighth inning, and Joe Smith will remain on for the Mets. He's already worked an inning and a third, and he'll stay in to pitch the eighth. And look at those numbers. Spectacular. The one number that's missing there is the zero, the number of runs he's allowed. And he stranded two more runners today when he came in in the sixth inning. Josh Willingham 0 for 2 in a walk. And if uh, if Joe Smith is taking the spot of Chad Bradford, which he is in a certain respect, Bradford is certainly holding up his end pitching in Baltimore. He's off to a tremendous start. 
hit hard but right at Gotai. And Willingham retired one away. And between Perez and Smith, they've retired the leadoff batter in every inning today. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhart. Kevin? Guys, May 19th going to be a pretty busy day for Willie Randolph because in the afternoon here at Shea, he's got the Subway Series against the Yankees. In the morning, though, he's going to be the keynote speaker at Fordham University's graduation. It's going to be a special day. His daughter, Ciara, among the graduating seniors, all four of his kids will then have graduated from college. That's not all. He's also getting an honorary doctorate from the school. And guys, let me ask you, because I'm not sure how to address this. Does that mean now in the post game, I have to say, Dr. Randolph, what about Oliver Perez's <laughs> performance? You tell me. Well, he said uh, Doc Willow would probably work. Kevin's looking dapper down there in that sport coat. He is. He's in his travel clothes. Dead giveaway, huh? <laughs> Time to go to Arizona. You'll be a little warm when you get there with the jacket, though. Watch out for the Black Widow spiders and the uh, scorpions in Arizona, Kev. Snakes, too. The Black Widows, they crawl in your shoes. <laughs> and Boone just got a piece of that to stay alive. Now, I want to go back. You were talking about driving to the ballpark at Rusty's Meat Wagon. I have this image of you sitting in the back of a truck with a, with a slab of ribs. Uh, the truck was empty. It was back when Rusty had his restaurant. Rusty's on, what, 73rd and 3rd. I miss that restaurant. And uh, it was his wagon that he would go. It was a shell. It was nothing inside in the interior. Just the two seats up front, the driver's seat and the passenger seat. And he would go to the fish market in the morning. Not him. Uh, sometimes him. Sometimes other people that worked for him. Pick up the fish. Pick up the meat at the crack of dawn or probably before. And then they would hose down that panel, really a panel truck, panel van. <clears throat> and sometimes they didn't get all that stuff out of there. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, oh. Boone gets drilled. So he's aboard with one out. We would all meet, have lunch at Rusty's. The only guy staying in the city way back in 84, 85 was Ron Darling, our partner, Ed Lynch. Myself and Danny Heath. Center fielder Cody Ross. And we'd all meet at 3, 3 o'clock, 3.15 at Rusty's. If we didn't eat there, and we'd all drive together in that meat wagon. <clears throat> and there was no seats in the back, so we'd be kind of sitting on the wells of the, where the back tires were. And sometimes it smelled pretty bad. There's Big Orange, a lot thinner. You'd be where the, the snapper had been earlier oh, in the day. Sometimes it, it wasn't pleasant. Ross tries to hold, but he went around. Nothing in one to Cody Ross, who's over two in a walk. Now you know Rusty is afraid of heights, and we'd go over the was traffic. As back then they were building, remember they were all that work on the FDR. Up it was up in the upper part of uptown then, oh. when they were redoing the uh, the FDR. So sometimes, particularly on Sundays with the Hamptons traffic coming home after a day game, we'd have to take 59th Street Bridge in. Well, Rusty would stop the car before the 59th Street Bridge. Ed Lynch would get out, <laughs> and, and Ed would have to <laughs> drive the car over the bridge because Rusty was scared to death looking down. And, we, we, and we, we'd say, geez, Rusty, it's... So you put Rusty in the back. No, Rusty got in the passenger seat. He wouldn't dare get in the back with all that, those germs. Well, I thought maybe it would be easier <laughs> for him. He couldn't see where he was going. And but he was white-knuckle study for Rusty. Oh, yeah. Well, he was like that flying. All those years. That's, I know. That's why he had a couple. had a couple belts before he got took off. <laughs> Boone at first and one out. Six three New York eighth inning. And there's a fastball for a strike from Joe Smith. Two and two. Joe's now thrown 34 pitches in relief. So he's being extended here. Joe Borcher to switch hitter on deck. Scott showing why he's staying ready in case Smith needs help here in the eighth. Looks like the Mets are bypassing Aaron Heilman today after he went two innings yesterday, and it's three and two now to Ross. Joe's laboring a little bit here, and he's being stretched out. He's pitched, what, two thirds last night. And he's certainly been very heavily used, his 16th appearance of the year in just the Mets' 26th game. Heilman, this is usually Aaron's inning, but he went two innings last night. Old foul. 
16 appearances for Joe Smith ties him for the National League lead in appearances. I want to know where Feliciano's been. He hasn't made an appearance here, and Schoenweiss is up in the bullpen. It's an excellent question. And, you know, Schoenweiss pitched in the first game of this series. It's true. We haven't seen and Feliciano since Saturday in Washington. Fouled away. And that's a question that I don't think has been asked. So. Hey kids, time to join Amanda for an all-new episode of Kids Clubhouse where fun, learning, and Mets baseball all come together. It's the Emmy Award-winning Mets Kids Clubhouse. New episode Saturday at 11.30 a.m. only on Sportsnet New York. There's Pedro. 3-2 to Ross. Missed ball four. And now the Marlins will get the tying run to the plate here in the eighth. Second walk given up by Joe Smith. And that's enough for Willie. You got the switch hitting Borchard coming up. Better left-hand hitter than right. And so Willie will go to the left-hander Schoenweiss to face Borchard. So Joe Smith pushed a little further than we've become accustomed to seeing. He ends up going an inning and two-thirds. A couple of walks and a hit batsman. He'll leave, and Schoenweiss will come on for him, trying to protect a 6-3 to three lead in the eighth. Here at Shea Stadium, day baseball. The Mets trying to salvage the finale of their series. As we check out the Toyota out-of-town scoreboard, Cubs and Pirates completed their suspended game from last night. Cubs won that, and they lead tonight. Alfonso Soriano, who hit his first home run of the year last night, hits his second home run this afternoon. The Brewers keep rolling their fourth straight win, despite the fact that Chris Capuano, their starter, left the game after three innings. And the Diamondbacks, who got bumped out of first place by the Dodgers last night, trying to get back at them. Phillies and Braves complete their series with Freddie Garcia against Chuck James in Atlanta. The Braves start the day a half game in front of the Mets. Scott Schoenweiss takes over the pitching for New York. Schoenweiss pitched in the opening game of this series on Monday night and worked a scoreless ninth inning. Takes on Joe Borchard here, tying run at the plate, and Borchard takes low. Borchard 0 for 3 today, struck out twice and reached on an error. And Bjorks Burgos and Billy Wagner both up in the Mets bullpen. And it's hit hard. Reyes makes the play, and it'll be a double play. Reyes plucked it out of the air, fed to go tie. And that gets the Mets through the top of the eighth inning. 6-4 on the double play. Reyes sprawling in the dirt to spear the line drive by Borchard and turn it into two. Keys Fan presents Flashlight Day at Shea, Saturday, May 12th. Get your tickets on Mets.com. Satanta Sports shows top international and European soccer and rugby 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Watch live action from the English Premier League, the UEFA Champions League, Euro 2008 qualifiers, Tri-Nations Rugby, and this fall, the IRB Rugby World Cup. To subscribe to Satanta Sports, call 1-800-DIRECTV or visit directtv.com forward slash Satanta. This month on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Houston, we have a pick. It's De La Hoya. You're breaking up. Uh, did you say Mayweather? Huh. De La Hoya. Mayweather. It's Mayweather. It's De La Hoya. The world is talking. The crowd's getting their money's worth in Vegas. De La Hoya Mayweather. The world awaits. Who are you picking? Mayweather. Absolutely. De La Hoya. Definitely. Don't miss it. Live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View, Channel 123. 
home eighth inning Carlos Delgado leads off against Wes Obermuller who's retired all six to face him in relief and Delgado takes ball one Carlos has walked twice today once intentionally otherwise 0 for 2 and they have got the full blown shift on and uh, Dan Ugla again closer to the right field fence than to home plate there's Ugla <laughs> if you took some ground balls out in the outfield before the game I guess in three that position out of, three and on out of Carlos well you know there's a limit to how deep you can play because you know on anything but a well stung ground ball you know, guy might be able to beat it out even guy doesn't run as fast as Carlos does now he's on base with his third walk of the day the first base runner against Obermuller and the seventh walk the Mets have drawn in this game well here's David Wright it's been a mixed bag for David today it's a nice day at the plate he's hit the ball hard three times has a couple of hits in an RBI but He's also made two errors in the field, one of which cost the Mets a couple of runs. Well, he's swinging the bat good now. He should be three for four today. First time up, he banked one off the left knee of the pitcher, Anibal Sanchez. And uh, Sanchez somehow was able to recover from that and continue, although he only lasted into the fourth inning. Fortunately for Sanchez, the ball caromed off his knee right to the first baseman, and David was out. But he's had two hits since. Ooh, that's a big hanging curveball right there. David was tardy on. This is hanging right here to rip. Oh, Lord have mercy. He missed it. Late. But this has been a David Wright kind of day because he's been 0-2 all day. Yes, he has. And he's been able to fight back from that as he did much of last year. Sean Green waiting on deck. Sean's had another good day at the plate today. Mets have pounded out 11 hits. Trying to add to their 6-3 lead here in the eighth. David tops one foul. This will be in Arizona tomorrow night to start a seven game road trip four in Arizona and three in San Francisco. Billy Wagner getting set to pitch the ninth. Tomorrow night Tom Glavin takes his third crack at win number 294. He's pitched well enough to get it the last two starts without a win. David gets under one and pops it up to shallow left. And Willingham's got it one away. Let's check in with the studio baseball day in New York update and Matt Yellow. All right, Gary cards and brewers men on first and third Anthony Reyes fakes to third goes to first Corey Hart called safe at second in the meantime Bill Hall comes home. Tony La Russa argues to no avail the Brewers sweep St. Louis. It's been awfully tough for the Cardinals after losing Josh Hancock in that fatal car accident the Cardinals have not won a game. And they haven't been playing very well. And you can certainly understand that. It's got to be awfully tough for a team after losing a teammate like that to all of a sudden go back to playing baseball. I would think so. Unfortunately, I've never experienced that. And St. Louis has gone through it twice. One and one to green. But they're just not. They're just playing terrible at home. They're three and nine at home this year, St. Louis. Their pitching has just been abysmal. Well, they're 10 and 16 now. And uh, they've fallen seven and a half behind Milwaukee in that central division. And that's not to say they can't bounce back from that, but it's not. You know, last year was was a magical postseason for the Cardinals after you know a miserable stretch drive in which they almost gave away a playoff berth, and then they just caught fire in October. Green goes down swinging for the second out. I guess the question is, you know, were they that good a team or did they just get lucky? Split finger right there. You know, I ran into, I, you know, in the offseason, there was a dinner up in the Mohegan Sun over David Cohn roast, and Jimmy Leland was one of the guests there. And Jimmy Leland told me that they weren't the best team in the American League, but they felt they were the better team in the National League that he really felt 
Jimmy said that that layoff they had really just took the steam out of them. It was hard to get the engine going again. They had that. How long was that layoff before the series Almost for them? Almost a week. Almost a week, yeah, right. Because they, uh, <coughs> they won their American League Championship Series in short order, and Mets and Cardinals win seven games. One and one to Castro. Of course, Jimmy had it to do all over again. He'd probably have a little extra PFP between the LCS and the World Series. Boy, that was embarrassing. Pitcher's fielding practice for the uninitiated. One and two to Castro. Well, they just play the, collectively as a team. Poor defense, particularly the pitchers. That was the most glaring, but they made some, there was some shoddy fielding in the outfield for the Tigers in that series, too. One and two to Castro is one for four on the day, and he tops this one to short. And Ramirez goes the short way for the Forest to end the inning. So Obermuller with three hitless innings in relief to keep his team in the game. And now Wagner on to try and close it for New York. Today and a glorious day for Oliver Perez. Ten strikeouts in five innings. The newest Met, Ruben Gotai, getting into the act. Mets held out by some shoddy defense on the other side. Andy Chavez getting a rare start and pitching in as well. Mets built a 6-1 to one lead. And as we go to the ninth, it's 6-3 to three New York. And Billy Wagner is on to try and finish it off on a day that's just gotten brighter by the minute. Well, Billy only four saves in this season, but it hasn't had that many opportunities. He's had four. <laughs> He's four for four, you're right. <laughs> It's either been a blowout either direction. It hasn't been too many times where I think as the season goes on, he will have much more opportunity. Pitched on Sunday in Washington, earned his fourth save in a one nothing game. Here has more of a cushion, a three run lead. Marlins have had just three hits today. Came in the leading run scoring team in the National League. Alfredo Amezaga pinch, hit his, pinch hits for the pitcher, leading off in the ninth. And he takes a strike. Amezaga rarely bats as a right-hand batter. He's a switch hitter, but he's had just three at-bats from the right side. He's a pretty good bunner. In at the corners for the Mets. And Wagner gets ahead of him 0-2. Well, they'll move back now with two strikes. Amezaga did a great job last night in center field for the Marlins. Robbing Carlos Beltran of at least an extra base hit and throwing out Delgado at the plate. Oh, and two to Amazaga. Popped up. Green. Right at the line. Makes the grab in fair territory. One away. So one out and nobody on. Oliver Perez in line for his third win of the year, his 17th career double-digit strikeout game. Joe Smith extended for an inning and two-thirds. Still has not allowed a run, and Scott Schoenweiss threw two pitches and got two outs on a line drive double play. So one away, here's Miguel Olivo up for the second time. Took a call third strike in the seventh after coming in defensively. Well, there's a first pitch fastball for him to swing at. 94 miles an hour from Wagner. Handler Ramirez, who's had a rough series with the bat, other than his Monday night home run off Chan Ho Park, waiting on deck. On the outside corner, a strike, and it's 0-2. And Wagner has come in and thrown nothing but strikes. Ahead on Olivo, 0 and 2. Line drive, base hit. And the Marlins have their fourth hit of the game. A one out single for Miguel Olivo. Well, base, a high slider here. Doesn't get it down, doesn't get it in. Full extension of the hands there by Oliva. Olivo, excuse me. Olivo's done very well against Wagner. He's now five for nine in his career against Billy. There aren't too many guys around with those numbers. 
Here's Hanley Ramirez with one out and one on. Ramirez 0 for 4 today, 2 for 13 in this series. And Wagner gets it into the knees. Ramirez thought that was low, nothing in one. Well, he has an argument, too close to take. That's a borderline strike right there, borderline knees. The Marlins need one more base runner to get the tying run to the plate here in the ninth. One and one to Ramirez with Dan Ugla to follow. This day started out chilly and cloudy. It is now comfortable and glorious. The center field, Daltron retreating, has plenty of room. Two out. Back to first Olivo and the Marlins are down to their final out of the afternoon against Billy Wagner. Well this is a huge batter for Wagner because if Ugla can get on then Miguel Cabrera could come to bat as the tying run. Ugla one out of three today a double and a walk. He's also had a rough day in the field. Never had a hit against Wagner, 0 for 3. Two out of the ninth. Ball one. Billy trying for his fifth save of the year, trying to knock it uh, to notch it down for Oliver Perez. Popped up, and this should end it. Delgado shading his eyes, and the ball game is over. Wagner comes on to get his fifth save in five tries. Oliver Perez with ten strikeouts, notches his third win of the year, and the Mets salvage the finale of the three-game series with the Florida Marlins. Well, they avoid the sweep at home, something that didn't happen to them last season. And Oliver Perez, five strong, kind of lost a little focus in the sixth. But Joe Smith came in and got the big out of the game at that point. The strikeout with the bases loaded and two outs. So the Mets start the road trip with a win, a long road trip. Mets will be going away for seven, but they finish the homestand with a victory. Now 16 and 10 on the year as they beat the Marlins six to three. Back with more from Shea in a moment. Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Kia, the presenting sponsor of the Kia Wednesday Game of the Week on Sportsnet New York. By Geico, 15 minutes can save you 15% on car insurance. Visit geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Panasonic for the speed of sports. By Nissan and the next generation Nissan Altima. And by IO Digital Cable, the leaders in HD and presenting sponsor of the Mets in high definition. Do you see in HD? Oliver Perez with a big day, 10 strikeouts over five and two-thirds innings. He also had a couple of hits and scored a couple of runs. David Wright, two more hits. The Marlins had a, a run in the first and then just two hits after that as the Mets win it 6-3. to three. Time for the Panasonic Plasma Replay. Panasonic for the speed of sports. Oliver Perez fanned two in the first, two in the second, two in the third, Two in the fourth, it's getting boring already. Two in the fifth, 10 strikeouts, his 17th career double digit strikeout game, his second as a Met. And the Mets win it six to three to take the finale of the series and go to 16 and 10 on the year, heading into their trip to Arizona and San Francisco. Tomorrow night, the Mets begin the road trip. Tom Glavin on the mound, 9.30 the game time from Chase Field in Phoenix. Coming up next, it's Nissan Post Game Live. Mets and Marlins finale of the series today, and it was the Oliver Perez show. He was at his best. Ruben Gotai in his first start as a Met drove in a run. Mets were helped out for some less than stellar Marlins defense and able to take full advantage. Oliver Perez, 10 strikeouts and a couple of hits today. He was the big story as he wins his third of the year, and the Mets avoid the sweep at the hands of the Florida Marlins.
Now for Keith Hernandez and Kevin Burkhardt, I'm Gary Cohen saying so long from Shea Stadium. We'll see you in Phoenix tomorrow night. So the Mets take the finale before heading out west, and for the time being, they sit tied atop the National League East. That will change tonight when the Braves are in action. This is Nissan Post Game Live with Lee Mazzilli. I'm Matt Yaloff. Uh, let's talk about no extended losing streaks here because it's mm -hmm. two in a row and a win. Yeah. They've had two in a row and then a win. That's huge in the long run. Well, they haven't lost the series all last year, and you know you don't want to start right now, obviously going to the West Coast. But yeah, you know what? You need that's how you win pennants, Matt. You stay away from those long losing streaks, six, seven, eight games. So for them come back after the last uh, losing the last first two games there. I mean, it's a big game for me. I, I, we talked about uh, pregame about being a must win. It's not a must win, but you know what? You got to get back in the winning mode, and that's what they're doing right now. You know, we, we sometimes talk about aces, how aces stop losing right. streaks. The Mets don't have the overwhelming ace that some teams have, but they have a number of guys in this rotation who you can look for 75% sure. of the time yeah. to be real strong, and Perez is one right, of them. Right, right. You know, Glavin, you look at as your ace, and you always count on Glavin because every time Glavin comes to the mound, you think you're going to win, but you know, Perez, he has that stuff to be that ace and we talked about that before he can go out to the mound and you know you think he's going to pitch a no hitter what kind of stuff he has like today he pitched five innings had 10 strikeouts yeah Keith Hernandez standing by at Shea Stadium Keith before a team hits a road for a cross-country flight uh, winning the final game of a series like this that's got to be huge well, you know, it's a long season. We're in early May. You don't want to get swept at home. We don't want to get swept anywhere. So it's good to come back. It's always hard for teams to sweep. There's some reason uh, the team that's down two always kind of has that that extra something just to avoid the sweep. But certainly a, a good win for the Mets because they're going to Arizona for four and San Francisco and three, you know, two pretty good teams. Uh, and on the road, you want to start it off and have a nice pleasant flight to the desert. You know, Keith, you know, Perez, I was looking at Perez, he was going so well going into the fifth inning, and then they had that long inning. Did that affect him at all? Because he just seemed like he got the first two outs and then lost it. Well, you know, he's done this in the past where he's in the sixth inning where he's kind of lost his focus, and I think he lost his focus there a little bit. It's the second time I've seen him do it in the sixth inning where he's just cruised. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're looking at a guy that struck out two guys in the first through fifth innings and uh, was just a complete command, gets the two outs in the sixth and can't finish. So, uh, you know, maybe he tired, maybe he lost focus. I don't know, but certainly Joe Smith came in and got the big out of the game. Keith, we see a lot of pitchers who don't seem to take a lot of pride or care in their offensive capabilities or uh, abilities. Um, Oliver Perez, sweet little swing there from the left side, a couple of hits tonight. Talk about him as a pitcher at the plate. Well, he's a threat up at the plate. There's no question. He's, he has an idea what he's doing up there, and he, a pitcher can help himself, well, whether it's bunting or at the plate. He got two hits today. He wound up scoring two runs, two of the six runs. Uh, he doesn't score those two runs, doesn't get on base. You know, it's a one-run ball game. So those all add up, and... Um, he had a nice day at the plate. Another lefty who has been on since day one is Sean Green. Is it too dramatic to say that Sean Green has reinvented himself from prior years where he used to be a dead pole hitter and now he's using all fields? Is that how you see Sean Green in 07? <clears throat> well, his power numbers have diminished over the last three or four years. He used to be a 30-plus guy and, you know, had his great years in, in Toronto and the Dodgers. And, you know, he's also playing in Shea now. And Shea is one of the old ballparks, uh, one of the pitcher's ballparks, one of the few today. So I think that he's realized that and is just, you know, to me, it's not so much so much emphasis on home runs. It's the runs you drive in, and that's important. Now, what I want from Sean Green, if I'm manager, and I'm sure what Willie wants is, you know, 80 plus 90 RBIs out of him in that seventh, six hole. And um, you can do it. By hitting singles and doubles, not home runs. You know, you can do it that way, too. Hey, Willie Randolph has done a great job of acclimating Joe Smith. His first appearance of the year, he came in in a lopsided game. Today, he stretches Smith out a little bit in a game in which the Mets seem to have it in hand. Uh, that's, that is definitely a conscious decision by Willie, yes, to do those type of things? Well, I think that Heilman threw two innings last night. That eighth inning is usually Heilman's, and I think the fact that he threw two yesterday, Willie didn't want to use him. 
I don't think he's really ready to go go to Burgos yet in the eighth inning. So uh, he let Smith go out there an extra inning, and he couldn't finish. It looked like he tired a little bit. And Sean Weiss came in, you know, the line drive right at right at Reyes. Reyes made a nice play. The Mets got. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate to get that get out of that inning with no runs. All right, Keith Hernandez, Mets go west. We thank you, uh, Keith Hernandez at Shea Stadium. So, Maz, let's uh, continue on with this conversation uh, regarding Sean Green. Mm -hmm. Sean Green, uh, well, it's a kind of a great story if you think about it. And he flies so under the radar. This guy, right. you never notice him. Mm -hmm. He's just so low key. He's so California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I like? You know, we talk about this about him going into spring training and having a plan he made a change he made a change in his swing he went into spring training you know what he didn't get a lot of hits didn't hit high for an average in spring training but he stayed with the plan he's a veteran so coming out of spring training he went into the season he had his plan is he made his adjustments uh, at the plate and all of a sudden now he's not trying to hit the home runs you know for me uh, Sean Green is probably not the 40 home run guy that he was in Toronto and LA but he could be a 20 25 home run and like Keith said you know what knocking 80 to 100 runs and you're really going to help this ball club all right David Wright is another hitter from the other side the right mm -hmm. side yesterday we talked about it breaking out of a slump but is one day really breaking out I think today we see that he carried over into yeah. today with, with some very nice at bats we'll take you through the first at bat first inning uh, with two on and two out he falls behind against Anibal Sanchez 0-2 let's go through this here that's a strike that's a strike. It's a foul ball, but he works his way back, and he's done this. We've seen him with two strikes be very good, Matt. Yeah, it gets back to the count where he wants to be, and the next thing you know, he stays up the middle, and that's what he did. Hit the ball off the pitcher and wind up making an out, but you know what? He had his plan of staying in the middle of the you know, field. What does this feel like? A guy has walked ahead of you, and then you come up with the chance to do damage. Well, here's a thing where I think it's going to turn him around as well, because you know, you're, you're on the on-deck circle right now, and you're seeing, well, they're going to walk Delgado. Well, they're thinking, ah, you know, what I'm David Wright I'm not swinging at that very well I'm gonna take advantage of you and here's the situation as a hitter on the end on deck so if you're saying all right give me that chance right now give me the chance I'm gonna come through and that's what he did and I think for him for David Wright that's the best that bat he had in two days mm, very interesting mm -hmm. all right let's see if he can do it on the road uh, the Kia Wednesday game of the week you saw it here on SNY this is now Nissan post game live presented in high definition by IO digital cable the leader in HD do you see in HD? When we come back, Maz and I go inside the game. There's more to do. Willie Randolph's comments and more from the Mets locker room. You'll hear from the closer, Billy Wagner, when Nissan Post Game Live continues. Maz and I go inside the game. It's the Mets and the Marlins. You saw it on the Kia Wednesday game of the week. The Mets trying to avoid the three-game sweep. Oliver Perez, 18 strikeouts in his last two starts and no walks. After striking out Hanley Ramirez, Dan Ugla gets on with a one-out double. Miguel Cabrera steps up. Miguel Cabrera, dangerous anywhere, anytime, smokes this one to center. Ugla comes in. Marlins up one zip. That's 20 RBIs from Miguel Cabrera already this year. After striking out Josh Willingham, Perez gets Aaron Boone to pop out. Ruben Gotai's first start with the Mets makes the grab between Beltran and Reyes. It's 1-0 Marlins. Bottom of the first, Anibal Sanchez on the mound for Florida. 2-0 lifetime against the Mets. He's been real good. Uh, not here. Two outs. Carlos Beltran walks. Carlos Delgado also walks. So David Wright steps up. Three for four last night, including the homer. Here's what we showed you earlier. The shot right back. Ball deflects to the first baseman, Boone, and Sanchez in major pain. If you look at this, though, not bad fielding position. It just was hit so hard he couldn't even defend yeah, himself. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> well, you, you know what? Oh, geez, I'll tell you. Uh, he stays in the game. Luckily, he's okay. Bottom of the second, Sean Green leading off, batting 394 against righties. How about it? The 0-1 pitch down the left field line, going the other way. Sean Green is hit in 10 straight games. After Ramon Castro flies out, Gotai steps up and gets it under the glove of Dan Ugla. So Green comes in and the game is tied at 1-1. Gotai's first hit and RBI as a member of the New York Mets. Oliver Perez, the sacrifice. Gotai to second. So that works out. After walks to Jose Reyes and Andy Chavez, Beltron comes up with a chance to open up the game and he does not. The pop-up, the Mets leave the bases loaded 
Anibal Sanchez gets out of a jam, still tied at 1-1. Top of the third with two outs. Dan Ugla, the routine ground ball to David Wright. David Wright with a lot of time. Misfires. His fourth error of the season. So there's a runner on. Then Cabrera walks. So now there's two on. Josh Willingham. Huge night last night. Goes down swinging. Six strikeouts in three innings for Perez. He gets Cody Ross. Then he gets Joe Borcher. His eighth strikeout. He's on a roll. And then a little hop. There is the hop. Bottom of the fourth. He's doing it at the plate again. The grounder into right field. He leads things off with a single, his third hit of the year. Jose Reyes comes up next. Aaron Boone playing behind Perez, but what is the deal with that? The pickoff attempt with no one covering. And well, you know, the, the first baseman has to let the pitcher know he's playing behind him. Right there, he picked Howard Johnson off as well, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, then Reyes, Reyes comes up with a shot to the left field corner, taking advantage of a Marlins team that's getting a little sloppy here. The RBI double, the Mets go up 2-1. Perez crosses the plate, and they have themselves a lead. After Chavez bunt advances Reyes to third, Beltran comes up, and this one, you know, this is interesting because it looks like Borchard broke backwards before coming in, and that leads to another run. The Mets up 3-1. David Wright, the single to left, his first hit of the game. So David Wright continues after breaking out a little bit last night. Green follows with a walk. Then it's Ramon Castro with the bases loaded. And the Marlins get out of another bases loaded jam. This could be a huge difference in this game. Bottom of the fifth, Perez at the plate. The blooper to short center off of Matt Lindstrom, the former Met that drops in. Perez has two hits. Reyes steps up. Jose Reyes, the ground ball to Dan Ugla. And this is more sloppiness. The, on the transfer, he just loses the ball and it trickles into the outfield. So everyone say Well, it's just a lack of concentration. You know, knowing the situation in the game, you know you're not going to double up Jose Reyes, so you got to make sure that you get that one out because he had no chance to get Jose on that double play ball. Let's take advantage. Andy Chavez comes up next. Lidstrom still pitching. Ball in the dirt. Gets by Matt Trainer, and both runners move up. Talked about young teams earlier this series, and I guess you're seeing some of it today. Chavez making his third start of the season. This guy's always prepared, Maz. The single to right, Perez scores. Reyes scores. It's 5-1 to one. after a Beltran ground out and intentional walk to Carlos Delgado. Here's David Wright. We showed you this earlier. Pride. 2-2 two -two fastball to left. He turns on it. Andy Chavez comes in right with his second hit of the game, his eighth RBI of the year. It's a 6-1 to one game. Top six. After getting the first two outs, Perez still in and cruising until he walks Willingham. Aaron Boone to left field and it drops in with a clean single in front of Chavez. Two on, two outs to the Marlins and there's a Joe Borchard with a base hit that's after the walk to Cody Ross. So Oliver Perez now finds himself in a situation with a three-run lead, this one off the glove of David Wright. Well, he knows that he's got to catch that ball. It's just a play that, uh, you know, he, he just messed it up. That's yep. it. It's bottom line. It's an error. Second error of the game. You know David Wright knows it. So Willie Randolph pulls Perez. Five and two-thirds, three runs, one earned, ten Ks, and a couple of walks. So in comes Joe Smith, three walks actually. Pinch hitter Mike Jacobs, after falling behind 2-0, he gets Jacobs. So Joe Smith gets it done, gets out of the jam. Top eight, Smith still in. Aaron Boone in the thigh, runner on. Then Cody Ross walks, tying run, coming to the plate with one out. Smith's day is done. Scott Schoenweiss in. Joe Borchard, your batter, and this one, Jose Reyes, give him a little credit there. Laying out, doubling off the runner. That could have changed everything. The double play, Jose Reyes to Ruben Gotide, still 6-3. So then, Billy Wagner comes in, saves the game. A rare save opportunity, Matt. Yes. Number five on the season for uh, Billy Wagner and five save opportunities. They're your numbers, 6-3 and... Uh, that's your final score. 11 hits. Marlins managed only four hits in this game, so it's a good way to get off to the West Coast. And Kevin Burkhart caught up with Billy Wagner, talked a little bit about difficulty getting into a rhythm, lack of save opportunities so far in 07. 
Billy, you certainly wouldn't be able to tell by your ERA and the way you've been pitching this year, but it's been hard to get into a rhythm. I mean, these save opportunities have come so few and far between for you. Well, you know, you just, uh, over years of uh, going through this, you kind of get the idea of what you got to prepare for. And, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's tough, but uh, when you get a, a, an opportunity to come in and help your ball club, uh, you want to take advantage of it. And today, uh, just one of those, uh, we need a must win for us. And uh, I just, Happy to be out there. I was going to say, this is a pretty big win, I think, because, you know, you're going out to the West Coast, and although you had great success there this year, it's a, it's a long seven-game trip. So I would have to think this is almost a must today, right? Yeah, it really was. We hadn't been playing well. We hadn't been scoring runs. We hadn't uh, been making the, getting the key pitching and uh, making pitches. But, uh, you know, today Oliver stepped up and came came in big for us, and then uh, Smitty doing his job. And, uh, you know, guys scored some runs, and, uh, you know, uh, if we can keep that uh, kind of momentum, uh, you know, we might have a good seven-game uh, trip coming ahead of you know, us. This bullpen is very quietly gone out and just been outstanding all year. Can you tell me what you feel for this pen out there? Well, we've got some guys that uh, just know what they're doing. I mean, they, they know their roles. They know uh, uh, they know the situations, and they're able to pitch through these situations. And, uh, so, you know, for a while, uh, we were kind of not being able to be in our role and, and pitch in that. And now uh, so we started getting some uh, starting pitching, and uh, they're getting deep into the game, so guys are being able to be used on a regular basis. How about, well, and I, know, I understand you're in the bullpen and sometimes you're not even out here, but what's your take on Perez? I mean, he really seems like he keeps taking a step forward. He, he's only really had that one rocky outing all year. Well, you know, that's to be expected. I mean, he is young, but, you know, over his last four uh, appearances, uh, he's had seven walks, and then he comes out here and he strikes out ten. He's just, uh, you know, he is. He's working hard, and I think he gets it. I mean, there's a lot of confidence the, the team shows to him, and, uh, you know, uh, I think he proved a lot to us on his third start after coming off that rocky start that he came out and just threw strikes. And, you know, today I think he got a little tired. But, I mean, he was he just battles. He, he, he loves the game. He's got that excitement. He brings that energy to the, to the field, and that's what you need. All right, Billy, congrats on save number five. We'll see you soon. All right, so tonight's Save of the Game is brought to you by the Queens County Savings Bank, a member of the NYCB family of banks. Visit them online at www.nycb.com nycbfamily.com. Visit that today. Billy Wagner's ERA, 0.75. So he's getting it done. Mm -hmm. The Mets pen is getting it done. We are not done here on Nissan Post Game Live. Maz and I return with more Willie Randolph's comments and uh, some more analysis from the big guy. Come back. <laughs> Nissan Post Game Live continues in a moment, but first it's Jonas Schwartz with a look at what's ahead on Geico Sports Night tonight at 6 o'clock. Hello. Hey, Matt, how are you? We will have more from Shea as the Mets avoided the sweep, and we will have more on the Yankees' pitching woes as Phil Hughes nearly throws a no-hitter, but it ends up joining the list of the walking wounded for the Yanks. And he was the highest-ranked corner in the game, in the draft, I should say. The Jets traded up to get him. We'll hear from the newest member of gangrene, Darrell Rivas. And we'll hear from the Giants as well. Much more coming up at 6 on Geico Sports Night. Now back to the two hardest-working men in show business, Matt and Lee. I don't know where they are. <laughs> I, just, uh, I don't know who he's talking about. He did I'm say Matt stumped. and Lee, I think. Willie Randolph, before packing his bags and heading out west, spoke to the media at Shea Stadium. The Mets beat the Marlins today, 6-3 to three the final. Here's Willie Randolph. He was good again today. So, I mean, he got 10 strikeouts, I believe. And, um, you know, he had a little wall there. You know what I mean? You know, he's he's always high energy and is always pumping out there. But, um, you know, kept us in the game again and, uh, and, and almost six innings for us. So, you know, satisfied with it. It looked as though when you went out there, you made, you were frank and to the point. <clears throat> what did you say to him? Uh, anytime I go out there, I am usually am you know, to the point, you know. Just wanted to... Um, Give him a little piece of my mind and let him know that he can finish up, you know, get through, through this inning. I told him, give me one more, and um, just wanted to put a little exclamation point on it. That's all. Do you look at him as more still a work in progress or, or, or a finished product yet? No, everyone's a work in progress. I mean, unless you're Glavin or, or El Duque. You've still got to go out and pitch. You've got to go out and be consistent. That's really the key. You know, just because you have a nice little run, it's nice to, to see them uh, succeed and progress. But, you know, no one's uh, got it all figured out yet. Your confidence is growing in him, though, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm always confident in all my guys. When I give him the ball, if I wouldn't give him the ball if I didn't have confidence in him. So, you know, he's having a nice little year, so we got to keep him going. Could you tell he had pretty good stuff early? Yeah, he popped the ball pretty good early. I mean, he's had good stuff every time he's gone out, actually. You know, just uh, as long as he throws strikes and uh, stays ahead of the count, he's usually pretty effective. Looking forward to getting out of town with the guys a little bit. Nice little road trip. No, we like it here. We like it at home. You know, yeah. we've been in and out of town. Uh, you know, we get some real nice warm weather in, in, in the West Coast. But no, we like playing in Shea. I miss my family when I'm away. 
really Joe Smith's progress um, in big spots. Again, you put him in a big spot today. It's a big guy. Can you talk about how he's progressing? Well, you know, he keeps getting better and better. And, um, you know, I learned to um, to trust him more and more as he goes out there. So, you know, he's uh, got some big strikeouts for us. He's, you know, made some good pitches at you know, the right times. And uh, he's, been, he's been solid for us so far. Willie, earlier in the season, you talked about putting your guys in the bullpen at different spots to see how they would react. Was this a case today with Smith? You just wanted to extend him just to kind of see how he would do there? Or? No, I wanted to stay away from Aaron if I could today. Um, you know, if I don't use Aaron today, we probably wouldn't have lost both of them for tomorrow. So, again, I, there's things that we do that might not be, you know, visual or to the naked eye to a lot of you guys or whatever. But uh, I, I didn't really want to push him, but since he had, he had not pitched that much lately, he was he was able to do that. And um, and he gave me what he had. But, you know, sometimes, again, you have to uh, do what you can today so you can play it tomorrow. So, but I wasn't trying to uh, see if he could do it. I mean, his pitch count was low the first inning. You know, he only threw a few pitches, and I was trying to just hopefully get him another inning where he can get through real quick. But, you know, I didn't want to extend him too long. Will, you, you talked uh, earlier today about runners on base, and that was another problem today. How, do, how does a club fix something like that? You just be patient. You know, when you get in a situation like that, try to be patient. You know, Carlos had a big walk uh, in one of those sequences there, which was huge for us. And uh, that's, that's just all it is, man. Just getting the pitch you want to hit. Not trying to feel like you own that at RBI. It's a team RBI. You should just let everybody pick you up. And we've done a poor job uh, lately of just uh, being over anxious in those spots. Going back to Joe, I mean, his first time around, I mean, is that delivery just befuddling to a lot of guys when they see it their first time around the league? Well, hopefully it'll stay that way. Uh, it, it's still unique and unorthodox, but you know I'm sure that uh, more, the more they see him, the more comfortable they'll feel against him. But then he's got to make adjustments. So, but right now, you know, he's doing good, and and that's good enough for me. But um, you know, no matter how many times you see him, he's still a little bit different. Well, was there a time in spring training when you knew you had unearthed something with Joe Smith? He wasn't really on the radar screen at the start of it, at least not to all of us. No, I heard a little bit about him, you know, before he, he came to spring training, and uh, you know, I always want to see for myself. But when I got a chance to see him throw, he looked like he um, was aggressive and would come after you, and um, didn't show uh, any early fear, which is what I look for in a lot of young players. And uh, he had a nice spring, and I think he gave us a nice twist, a different dimension, uh, it's kind of the way uh, Bradford did last year. So uh, you know, he pitched well, and, and when guys pitch well in spring training, or when they show me they want to compete. I try to reward him for that, and, and so far he's um, he's done a nice job. That's Willie Randolph a few moments ago. We take a break here on Nissan Post Game Live. Uh, Nissan Post Game Live returns. Maz and I are back to wrap this show up. Come back. Nissan play of the game defense for the second straight day. How about it? Jose Reyes coming up big, picking that ball out of the air and doubling off the runner. The Mets get out of trouble. They eventually win the game 6-3. to three. Scott Schoenweiss, by the way, induced that double play. All right, so the Mets now go west. Listen to the list of pitchers they're going to face. Randy Johnson, Brandon Webb, LeVon Hernandez, Matt <laughs> Kane, and Barry Zito. That's a whole different That's a deal. A whole different deal, yeah. And if you can come back on a trip, you like to say I can come back five and two, but facing those pitches, you come back four and three on the coast, play a little bit over 500 and come back home, you'll be okay. All right, that's a wrap on Nissan Post Game Live. We'll be here for every game uh, throughout this road trip here on SNY. Mets Kids Clubhouse is next. Daily News Live follows at five. I'm Matt Yalow. I'm Lee Mazzilli. Good afternoon, New York. <laughs>